Thank you, Sean, for those shirt-related compliments. Uh, Sean and I are both in, in salmon today, and we're actually having fish and chips for lunch. Pretty nice. funny how that works out. I am Adara, and this is Obi in the green sweater. And I get a very nice sweater. And um, we are... I like your shirt as the, well. Pardon? I said I like your shirt as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very complimentary today <laughs> as we wait for everybody to roll into the chat so we can do the roll call for yes. today's how to trade session we are going to be talking about today time of day of course we're talking about that all week today though we're going to focus on trading the afternoon which i guess is apt because we talked about the morning uh, on monday and then the midday yesterday so today we're going to be talking about trading in the afternoon chase bands hello hi rich naples hi Hey-o. andrew chow rh Darwin saying, hola, Adobe. Hola to you, Darwin. Bob Dub, Trader Drew, Callum Mitchell Miller, Mui Casanato. Um, we have Fonzie, 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 Max Trading and Investing, Jack, Levi H, J Lo, Brett, Brandon, Fiddleback, Derek Thompson, Pranaya, Chuck of All Trades, Dexter, Rathkin. I love that name. Phony Baloney, love that one too. Everybody has great names here in the chat. Get a real job, they say. Snow Ove. Uh, Andy Yernes, everybody's coming in now. Great to see everybody here in the chat. Jose Gonzalez, Computi, uh, Electronic Music, Bright Ascending. Everyone's rolling and we're going to let everybody do their thing. 21. Uh, and actually, we have the 21st episode of the podcast coming up this weekend, too. Funny enough, too. So the podcast yep. will also be doing its thing, 21. But for now, uh, what have you been up to this morning before we get into the lesson? Um, yeah, so I've been a, a, little, bit of a, a little bit of a sweaty, uh, sweaty morning. I was heavily short biased coming in on chips. As you can see, I pretty much sprayed every price on Intel. I was like, oh, that's a great price. That's a great price. That's a little bit of a chase. I like that. I like that. And then we talked about yesterday, we literally talked about like midday trading um, uh, and, or just like even in the morning uh, looking for those uh, economic numbers. And I was like, yeah, you got to have that stop. And if you're, if you're, uh, if you're uh, kind of playing in and around that time where an economic number comes out and look at that, Adara, right here on Soxel. I'm sure on Soxel, sure, my in, uh, stop never got hit on Intel. It was a little bit wider. I was a little bit uh, more, I guess, uh, loose with the stop on Intel, but Stock sell definitely a lot tighter, and that economic number comes out. I think ISM at 10 o'clock, and boom! Look at that, straight to the upside. So glad I had that in. So it's a nice, nice little example of something we were talking about yesterday. Got to be wary of uh, of speakers and economic numbers. And uh, today we got some speakers as well, right? So lots of speakers. Yeah, Fed Powell actually will be um, making. No, I'm joking. He won't be here, but we will be bringing <laughs> his an appearance to you at 12:10. Yeah. Yeah, no. So uh, I, th- I think yeah, that was a good example of like yeah, uh, gotta gotta stay gotta stay nimble when those numbers come out. Uh, Intel, I actually liked it even more after the after the n- uh, number came out. I was like, all right, well, it can't really go, even though the market is ripping to the upside. And I was like, yeah, I'll take more there. I'll take more there. And it happened to work out. Uh, Sock sell short once again here, but. Uh, We'll, we'll see. We'll see if it comes into fruition. Soxel not really, it's, it's a little bit more stubborn with the bids on, on the day. And then you can see that Intel's curling up a little bit as well. So that might be all she wrote down at uh, 4080s there on Intel. So that's, that's been the morning. Um, nothing too crazy, nothing too eventful. I know that Micron and a lot of these other chip names, if you were long, oh boy, did you have some nice, uh, uh, nice moves and a nice wave to, to ride on that. But uh, that's how my morning has, has, has been. Um, how about you? Are you watching anything for the, for the midday session today? Yeah, I mean, I, I really like this Tesla long off the 90 MA. Clearly, I missed it. By the time I started looking at it, it was at 171.40 or 167.40. What am I saying? 167.40. And I was like, oh, maybe it's short within a range. But then also that the 90 MA bounce is really nice. So I was like, if we bounce again, I'll take it long. We did not bounce again. We stayed on that trampoline to the upside. We were flying with the viciousness, so Tesla did not invite me into the Cybertruck. How rude of it. But that's okay. If there are dip buys along this 90 MA, I want to get involved. This is an area we bounced off a little bit earlier. We rejected off it even earlier than that, so it's a level that I do like. That's the main thing I'm looking at, but I do have to talk about another name in play, and that name is Play, David Busters. So uh, this one, we are falling off a little bit of a, off that VWAP. I was going to get long off VWAP, but I said, Adara, wait a little bit. Look at all these wicks uh, to the upside of sellers overwhelming buyers on the five minute. I want none of that smoke. So I'm happy I waited. If we pick up somewhere, though, this could be an interesting trade. I like the idea of play. But right now, it's not really in play for me because we didn't play with that VWAP level the way I wanted us to. And now I will stop making puns with that ticker. Um, 
But, uh, yeah, thank you so much, JC, uh, giving us a little compliment here uh, for, for Team Adobe, I guess. So much appreciated. Always happy to be here. And uh, someone in the chat as well, I think it was Hans Beer, saying Obi looks a lot like, or Sharif looks a lot like Obi today. So, um, yeah, <laughs> funny, funny times. Yeah, Obi is, thank you again to Obi. I don't know about that. I'm looking a little, uh, looking a little slim compared to, compared to Sharif there. But uh, yeah, no thanks. Uh, it's always uh, it's always good to good to kind of uh, be on and you know trade uh, trade uh, live here with you guys and uh, talk about talk about uh, talk about some some of these markets and uh, yeah we're still learning how to trade so we're just uh, we'll do it together and uh, with that we'll go right into the lesson, Dara. Yeah, let's let's do it. Uh, what great great transition there. Um, also, yeah, there you are. Look at that that URL there on the bottom. So shout that out. Uh, let's talk about trading in the afternoon, the natural progression, I guess, from trading in the morning and trading in the midday. Trading in the afternoon, uh, basically, afternoon trading usually refers to that period from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., so ahead of the market close. So technically, a lot of the midday is in the afternoon as of as of 12 noon, but that still refers to the midday period because you are going to have action that's a little bit more subdued as traders, you know, maybe eat brisket at lunch, as, as we did actually see live on the show on Thursday, or, you know, take, take lunch in general, different time zones. We see a little bit slower action in the middays we discussed yesterday. So during the afternoon, things heat back up as we get ready for the close, especially power hour, which there's a whole section on later in the lesson, so I'm not going to belabor that too much. But basically, uh, much like the trading scene in the morning, we start to see a return in the afternoon trading to extra volatility. Traders, market participants, and institutional investors all back from the lunch and their peepers are on the market. They're preparing for the close. There are more eyes on the market and action does tend to ramp up a little bit more too. Uh, but also, of course, we have to talk about some of the characteristics of trading during this time of day. Yeah, so uh, characteristics of... Uh how the morning and the midday was over the past couple of days. And yeah, uh, uh, I think uh, that's, a, that's a good observation there to, to note that uh, uh, participants will kind of uh, trickle back in in that last hour as, uh, as we come into a close and uh, a lot of, lot of eyes on, right? So um, if, if we haven't really been doing too much, say that we have, what I've, what, what I've noticed is sometimes you get, you, get that, you get that leg in the morning session, in the midday, kind of a consolidation chop, nothing really, and maybe you can look for that uh, kind of volume to come back in and see what it does with that consolidation end of day. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, you'll, you'll see that that range or consolidation or chop that's been happening in the midday, that'll er interact in one way or another that you could potentially structure something off of. But it's always good to be, uh, ha have eyes on and good to be watching for that uh, momentum and that uh, volume to kind of come back into a ticker, especially it's, if it's in play. And uh, yeah, so uh, if, if, uh, if you're looking for like a trend day, maybe we've been chopping around um, uh, in, in the mid midday session, you, you potentially looking for that continuation going into the end of day as well. And something I really like uh, for, uh, for end of day, um, and uh, I, like, I like squeezes. So sometimes if you see that the morning session and the midday session has kind of trapped uh, uh, shorts in a way, and we're kind of slowly trickling like a low volume uh, higher and higher in the midday going into the end of day. I always like to look for that power hour squeeze. Uh, now, I haven't seen one uh, as strong or anything that, uh, that aggressive lately, but I, I do like it when that does happen. And that's a classic example of like, okay, well, you know, you might have, uh, you have, might have some strong volume in, in the morning, and then intraday the volume dries, uh, dries out, and then price doesn't really get anywhere end of day, you might get some spiciness there. So you get like uh, what I'm talking about, like an intraday liquidity trap kind of potentially happening. So end of day, lots of opportunities, uh, lot of potential for lots of opportunities. And obviously you also have the close, right? There's a lot of strategies in and around taking the close uh, for, uh, for anything that might be interesting on the day. So some characteristics to watch out for in the end of day power hour. Yeah, there, there's certainly, I like that you use the word spicy. I think that does describe a lot of that end of day action, just looking at the big desk and being like, oh my gosh, like all of these, these things are moving, things pick back up, things can get really exciting, so you just have to keep your eye on things. But there are a couple of really important times within this time of day, I guess we're getting a little meta with this lesson. So within the time of the afternoon, there are two important times you want to watch out for. One of them is going to be power hour. So this term usually uh, we use to, re to refer to or describe the last hour of the trading day, which is going to be 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. This is when the markets get extra exciting. They get, you know, an infusion of power. 
And so um, with the end of the trading day just a few hours away, usually traders are looking to get either flat on the day, so you're going to be selling or de-risking, or you want to get involved in some of that volatility before close. And as Opie just mentioned, there's lots of squeeze potentials. The, the end of the day does really give you a lot of really exciting opportunities to get involved with. So I think that, you know, what we call power hour for a reason. So halfway through the power hour, around 3.30 p.m., things are going to get even spicier, though. An extra habanero pepper adding to the market here with the imbalances. So we get those early imbalances at 3.30, and then you get your actual market on close uh, imbalance at 3.50. And so the market on close imbalances reflect market on close orders, which allow traders to buy or sell at the last available price of the trading day. So particularly large buy or sell imbalances on certain stocks can suggest an influx of institutional interest. And the final imbalances, as you just said earlier, too, they hit at 350. So keep an eye on the market at 350. Neil and Sean will always bring it to you on, on that desk so you will know exactly what is going on with those because a lot of these individual names can give you some, some really interesting opportunities with regards to the imbalances. So with it, you have power hour within the afternoon. And within power hour, you also have imbalance time. Yeah, and then sure. we also have some other factors to consider, too. Yeah, so some of these uh, factors, just to car carry forward there, um, uh, is uh, things could be moving around, like I mentioned, in, in, the, in the afternoon that might not have been moving midday or sometimes even at the, in the beginning of the day. So uh, something to keep an eye on. Again, we talk about the volume and uh, scanners, right? So uh, running scans throughout the day, I think, I think is very, uh, very effective. Uh, I kind of uh, sometimes on, my, uh, uh, on, on the app there, you can just see right there uh, what's Doing the most volume, right? What's doing the most volume? What are the gainers? What are the losers? Uh, right now, I'd like to take a take a quick look at that every now and then. So, running scans at the end of the day just to see what's how things have built up, what the what the kind of story uh, story of the price action has been throughout the day on the ticker. Uh, some of these top volume leaders, what are they looking like uh, going into the close? I think that's all. That's all uh, uh, things that could be potentially uh, important if uh, if you're kind of uh, you know lost for. Um, was for a little bit of, uh, I guess, direction. Right? You're looking for you're looking for potential trades going into the close. And I think running those scans end of day is a, is a pretty good look to have. Um, and then you can you can uh, um, kind of identify what trades potentially might be setting up relative to your playbook as well, right? So uh, another thing is like checking your earnings calendar, right? So earnings. End of day earnings. You can see that if if something is reporting earnings today, maybe there's a setup. Uh, maybe it's doing something interesting going into the close in anticipation of those earnings, and there could potentially be a trade there again uh, uh, relative to your playbook, of course, right? So, um, uh, looking out for that in the power hour. Sometimes you can see that aggressive uh, aggressive move either way, or even uh, tight little range. Sometimes I've seen it. I've seen it. Uh, I've seen it on uh, on Amazon a couple times. Uh, pre uh, like going into earnings report, maybe it'll range uh, in 30, 40 penny range uh, going into the close. That could be that could be interesting if you like trading ranges as well. Um, but uh, yeah, economic releases as well. Another factor to consider uh, is uh, that uh, in the uh, Certain numbers can be coming out. You have FOMC. Uh, you know that Powell comes on to the mic around 2, 2.30. Uh, numbers are released. He comes on and talks to the reversion men. We talk about that a lot. And uh, when he comes around, uh, markets do ca definitely tend to move. And that's something you might want to consider if you are in position or you're looking to take positions uh, in and around that time. So usually that... Uh, um, that session, I think the, the number comes out around, around 2, 2 p.m. And then uh, sometimes he comes on the podium around 2.30 as well. And then that goes on for about an, about an hour or so. So uh, make sure you're make sure aware of uh, any of those inc uh, incidents that may be happening going into the close. Earnings, scanners, any speakers talking or FOMC, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Obi, for, for going over those. And that, that is our lesson of the day. We do repeat it a couple times because sometimes people come late. But one thing you do not want to be late for, I couldn't think of a good transition for this, was or is going to be the Disney shareholder meeting. I have it up nice. on my computer. So apparently it's asking me to, to kindly return 15 minutes prior to the presentation to ensure my connection. So I'm just going to keep this open and refresh at 1245 because it starts at 1.00. Shout out to, to Varsha asking about the time this one started, which reminded me, hey, I want to get my little screen up because I like to be able to see these events as they happen. We saw with Rivian, which was another midday event uh, that happened 
I guess, I can't believe a couple weeks ago now, the stock moved up massively on that event. So sometimes, especially with an event as hotly participated or anticipated, sorry, as this Disney shareholder meeting and the, the ongoing proxy battle between Nelson Peltz and the Disney board, I think this could be really interesting to see how this shakes out. Move aside Jake Paul and, um, and Mike Tyson, there's a new fight in town. <laughs> So let's see. I'm really excited to see what happens in Disney. Also, I did get involved in play. It, I thought it was in play once we broke back above VWAP. We're falling a little bit here. If we break decisively below this VWAP area again, so we're, we're giving this like 35 pennies, I'm out. But I want to be trying to take up into the 69, 70 area, right? So because we want a little bit more reward, our, our risk is actually, it's, it's, not, it's not at all bad considering because we're looking for about a dollar here in profit, right? So... We're giving this about 35 cents. Nice risk to reward ratio, 3.5 to 10. I need to work on making mine more mathematically sound rather than just levels I like and, and becoming kind of mathematically weird. But the point is, the reward outnumbers the risk. That's what you want. What do you have your eye on over here? Um, I'm, I got my eyes on uh, what I'm in right now. Okay, so the, I guess uh, it's not showing my positions right now. I got to get in and out of something to kind of update that. But you guys can see on uh, 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 in, on my main screen right here, um, short a little bit of uh, Sox sell, short a little bit of Intel. Intel pushing that 80 right there. I did pull it up. There was some size initially at that 80. Some interesting action kind of happened uh, even going into that uh, the the manufacturing number, 10 a.m. number. Um, interesting, kind of a 2,000 lots showed up on the bid at 4108 and then uh, just a few just a few uh, I think it was a couple of minutes or even within the minute before that uh, before that release on the bid buddy gets filled and then the, the the number comes out we shoot up about 30 40 pennies on intel off of that that was pretty interesting there i was like all right well you know i got uh, i got a little uh, a little short there and I, I was a little sweaty as i was mentioning to mentioning to adara when i sat down on the desk a little bit of uh, of a uh, of, uh, yeah, a little sweaty, a little flustered when I was like, okay, well, somebody's kind of bid, trying to bid this up, but the selling pressure I still feel is still kind of there. Um, so I'm still willing to short risk, giving in a wider risk. But uh, we talk about kind of uh, working in and around some of those, uh, some of those economic numbers. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to be in position, but sometimes... You, maybe you still do with with obviously a little bit of a stop in, but the market right here super strong to the upside, eighteen two forty to eighteen fours, and then we're kind of pretty much retracing some of what we did over the past couple of days. So uh, that's uh, that's definitely interesting. Very very strong on the day. When will we when will we turn? Are we going to take a breather? Are we going to have a reversion? I have no idea. But uh, let's see if the market kind of comes in. If Intel can kind of uh, come in as well. Intel kind of gap down. Uh, if you guys look at the daily chart, that's why I, I, I like it. I'm kind of watching it on the day. For that, I'm interacting with it. So I'll pull it up here. Um, if I can just uh, get rid of that VWAP. Okay, cool. Um, so right here. So uh, this is how we were looking. We got that. Uh, we got that news overnight. Uh, something about uh, something about foundries and uh, taking losses uh, much more than expected. Clearly, the sentiment doesn't really like it, and uh, we kind of get crushed. So, looking at this on the daily chart here, you can see what Intel is testing. Intel is testing not only a daily low or a weekly low; it's a multi-month low here, down at uh, what is that price right there? The low is 40.57. So right there, the 40.57, and we're, we're kind of slowly kind of trending uh, into that level here with sellers distinctly in charge. Look at the market and look at Intel. That's a stark difference, right? So the market is market slaps up uh, about over uh, 200 points, right? So 200, 18, 4, uh, 18, 240, and then now we're pushing 18, 440. So 200 points to the upside, and Intel cannot catch a bid for, for, uh, for to save its life there. And uh, I think... Some of the other names. That's why I was a little sweaty on the Intel short, but I still believed in the idea, believed in, uh, believed in the short, had some conviction, covered most of it right here on top of the 80s. But now we're making some fresh lows. I was waiting for a nice little pop to get some more in, but never really got back to some of these levels above that 41. So let's see what we do with this 4080. Um, some decent size uh, that kind of went on and traded near these highs, these intraday highs here at that 41, 41.10s, 41.20s as well. Lots of churning going on uh, at, at those prices. So I liked that look as well. And 
At the same time, I was feeling out the pressure on Soxel, and look at the look at how many times I get stopped out. I am not following my three three strike rule here, but uh, I was a little convicted on on the short side. And uh, look, get stopped out the initial time, get stopped out again on on the on the ISM number, get stopped out again on this, on this leg, and I'm like, all right, maybe I'm being too aggressive. Try it one more time with an even tighter stop, and uh, get stopped out again. So we short one more time underneath this 47. Let's see what we do here, Micron was uh, one hell of a runner off the open. You can see that Micron kind of catching a bid uh, and not even having any sort of relief as of, uh, as of right now. Sure, we go a little bit sideways on top of 126, but we are, we are holding these gains uh, quite well and pushing for fresh highs on Micron. So uh, maybe the play was to, to stop out those three times, hit my three strike rule, and then maybe reassess to flip to the long side. But uh, clearly some of these chips are straight to the upside and then again of course we got to take a look at nvidia nvidia that 900 interaction definitely interesting consolidating above that holding that 900 as of right now but that resistance at that 904 also coming in uh with uh, with a potential double top as of right now let's see so those uh, these are three minute candles let's go over to the 15 real quick and yeah a little bit more stark of a, of of a, of a resistance being pointed out there on the 15 minute chart. You can see over the past couple of days, whenever we kind of attempt to push past that 900, it doesn't really want it. Today we get about four points above 900 and uh, we're kind of chopping and consolidating over that over on top of that 900 while the market is still holding within the uh, within a nice little, uh, within its, its, its upper part of its range here, right? Range being we've only, we've only visited uh, the, the high just once. We don't even know if this is the high yet, but let's see if and when the market does pull back, if Intel kind of cracks this uh, 4080 and then pushes that day low, that monthly low that I just pointed out uh, on, uh, uh, on the higher time frame chart on Intel. So that's what I got going on. That's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, let me see what you guys are trading uh, by mention, make sure you throw it up in the chat. Uh, let's take a look at what some of you guys are trading. I know a lot of names are very, very strong. The bid was not wrong today. The long is definitely on on some of these names, but I'm looking for that short on uh, Intel with that catalyst that we had today. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff moving around that that you know you want to take advantage of. I believe play is gonna be kicking me out of the arcade in a second. Maybe I ran out of tokens. I don't know. I'm gonna to have to probably get out of that. But I want to talk for a second about this Tesla trade. So I was, I was pleased as punch with this. I was saying yesterday why am I not being scalpier? I know I trade better when I am adhering to the scalpier nature. I have the patience of, I don't know, like a small child or something. I'm trying to think of a good analogy. But my long-term patience, I would say I have my short-term patience. It's not non-existent, but it's not super existent either, right? So I like to be kind of in and out of these moves. So then it's like, why am I not trading that way? So to make a long story short, that was really the impetus for this short. I got involved here because I did see this top and tail candle at Tesla 168.40 and I said, hmm. So we have this other red candle. Then I get involved when I see this guy coming and I said, you know what, Adara? Let's say like 168 tens. Let's give it a little bit of room. If it goes up there, if it fails, you go and you short this pop. If not, then you get out if it breaks above that 168.40. It's basically one to one risk reward. I took it. I was very happy I did. We got into 85s, I think, and I took it out. So please just punch. This was a planned scalp, and it's the type of trading I want to be doing more of. So pretty happy with this. Play is a little bit less of that. Play is actually becoming a good old-fashioned range, which I don't mind. But, like, you know, give a girl a clue, play. Give a girl a clue, yeah, even busters. Don't just, you know, start becoming a range. So I think we're going to have probably a dip by here, 50. Let's do 54s. I want to add a couple shares to the mix here. And I will be getting out entirely, like I said, if we have this decisive break below VWAP. That being said, though, even with this pull down, we did make a higher low. The other, the other thing, though, that you could argue is this is a lopsided little shoulder armpit situation here, setting up for head and shoulders. I do want to be cognizant of that. Worst case scenario, if we get out at 69s. You know what? I think we're going to have to get half the position out at 69s. I have decided based on what this chart is telling me. As Neil said, you know, you have to have like a plan. Uh, yesterday was during the lesson of the day and I thought it was very apt and something I'm trying to learn from. It's about having a plan and, and sticking to it to some extent, but also adjusting accordingly. Also, we're on all socials. Check us out. I love that banner. Go give Trader TV a like, follow, what have you, on our social media platforms. So give that a look. Uh, shout out to Fabian and Mean for putting that little banner there. But yeah, Tesla picking back up. I was considering getting back into the long here around the area where I got out of the short. Then I was like... 
Wait and see how it holds up. Clearly, I waited too long. I, it, but if this scallop continues, I've drawn, drawn out my micro ranges of areas that I want to play around. So I have micro ranges ready should I decide to get involved in this. I like this area of this 167.60s up to 168.40. I like 167.60, 167.2 area. Then 167.2 to about 166.80, 70, I guess. And when I say micro ranges, I'll play these in either direction. It's not like they're necessarily long or short, but they give me areas to roam where price action has shown itself to, to be happening. So that's what I'm kind of looking at here. Thank you very much, Bears versus Bulls. Much appreciated. Rock Doc as well. Happy, happy, yeah, happy for the support. I've always loved being here. And everybody in our community is, um, is always awesome. So, yeah, right now we're still playing around and play, but we'll see how long the fun lasts there. Also, really quickly here, I want to chat about Lily. Because Lily, volume below with Lily, so I'm not stepping in yet. But initially here, what's on my side chart for Lily? The three minute? This three minute was actually kind of looking a little like it was curling to the upside. I was very much down. Then we rejected out this 90 MA with a topping tail candle to boot. And now I'm like, Adara, this actually looks like a short here. Look at on this three minute, all these little wicks of buyers trying to overwhelm sellers. But -uh -uh, sellers like, no, we're continuing to go to the downside. So I think that this could be a short. I would like Lily to get to a milli before I take a dose of a short here in the day. I was trying to make a pharmaceutical pun. Didn't really play. That's all right, but um, it was a nice. cricket. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, says Opie. But yeah, we'll have to see how, how play goes. I think this is going to be more of a range that I'll be playing. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm kind of uh, watching this sock sell here. I see a lot of people mentioning, uh, mentioning uh, um, tickers in the chat. And uh, yeah, no, I agree. The solid, uh, solid short there on the Tesla as well. Uh, but something that's caught my eye, oh boy, is that Amazon. Amazon straight to the upside. I was like, uh, off the open, I was like, oh boy, is that, a, is that a nice reversion off of this strength that we had 180 into 181s? And then it comes right back in, gr breaks that high, consolidates, and now we're grinding to the upside? Huh, looking left, there's a high right here, uh, only about 15 pennies away at that 180. And I like that 183 a few days ago as well. Let's see if that selling kind of comes right back in. Let's take a quick look at the higher time frame here as well. So uh, uh, this is an hourly. You can see how strong that wick is on the hourly on Amazon 183. Didn't really want that two days ago. And coming in today with this market strength, we're about to kind of violate that high. So let's see if we catch some shorts off guard. Let's see if we get that buying pressure if we do go in and break that 183. But We've already had a significant amount of buying pressure going into that level as well. So how far can we get past that? I have no idea, but that's absolutely amazing there. Uh, did you guys take a long on Amazon there? A uh, bit of a yesterday's kind of high break and that consolidation after that one, uh, 183 kind of uh, uh, slammed right back into that 180. We hold that 180 off the open. Wow. That's really nice. And then you get that strength with that market tailwind pushing right back into an intra intra-week resistance level at that 183. So let's pull up that Amazon tape here and we'll we'll take a closer look at uh, what that 183 may or may not have in store for us. So sock sell is looking nice off this 47 as of right now. We are still in this uptrend, so I am kind of uh, I am kind of pushing on the counter. But uh, that's, uh, that's, that's fine for me right now. Let's see if it kind of works out. I've, I've accepted the risk for that. TSM, another name that's kind of uh, uh, very, very strong on the day. Vanek, of course, we're watching that SMH. Uh, but yeah, Intel looking distinctly different, right? I'm going to pull up. I'm gonna, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to pull up this, uh, the, my, uh, my other chart here so you guys can get a better perspective of, uh, of just the semis and what's going on with some of these semis here, right here. So boom, you can see NVIDIA, AMD, SMCI, this is Soxel, this is Vanek, this is SMH, that's TSM, that's ARM. Look at, there's only one that doesn't look like it really belongs and that's Intel. Intel looking distinctly different in the chips. So chips, chips with the dip or just one chip with the dip today? And I think that chip is Intel. So let's see what those guys do here at some of these lows. I'm looking for the market to take a little bit of a breather can that confluence with some more selling on Intel? That's what I'm asking. That's a question I'm asking. I've already taken a good chunk off of the trade that I kind of wanted, just holding a little piece for the dream and uh, maybe potentially looking to add more as well. Let's see, on Sell as well. So uh, maybe that's, uh, that's something I'm kind of uh, waiting for. 
Maybe it'll come into fruition, maybe not. Who knows? But I'll stay patient for that one. People talking about NVIDIA, we just looked at that one. Yeah, NVIDIA kind of, uh, kind of pushing as well. So something I'm, I'm not really watching right now is Softy. Softy, we know, is kind of part of that, uh, that sector as well, uh, in a sense. But uh, yeah, okay, so looking very, very similar here. Now, another name I kind of had on watch, and it, it's doing, it was doing some craziness off of the open, is GE. GE, I was like, okay, well, why, why do I like GE on the day? A little bit of change in behavior on a larger time frame on GE. So if you take a look at the weekly on GE, it, it's been quite quite strong there and so coming into the morning i was like we broke this uh this uh prior week low and kind of that uh the, kind of that very strong trend coming into the open i was looking for a short on ge below this 137 we were opening in around 130s right but take a look at that strength that strength kind of pushes us right back right back in that candle goes uh, red to green and I even wrote it down I was like be careful shorting GE even though I like the idea that pre that week open is at 140.05 and take a look at that that week goes red to green very very aggressively we got to go down to the one minute to really see that come into action there so 140.05 was week open and take a look at that 140 you get slapped up into 140 and that consolidation definitely a missed trade on my part where I'm like alright well if the week is is going to go red to green i'm looking for that week open to hold and that week open holds by 50 40 pennies 40 43 pennies if you take a look at that kind of a uh, low base there 44 so roughly about 40 pennies uh it holds above so a dif decently defined risk on the week going gr uh green to, uh sorry red to green on ge and we're trading near these highs at that 145 so some fresh highs on ge that's pretty awesome there so that plan didn't really work out uh, the way i was looking at it looking for it to happen but Got to stay nimble. We talk about how I like to say I got to try to do better at uh, being like water. And that's definitely a situation where I'm like, all right, well, that's a strong reason to buy regardless of whether you're short or long through that 140, uh, 140 week open and GE giving you about almost five points. Well, it gave you five points off of that week open kind of break back through. Um, but I was, look I was a little short buys. I was looking for the short that clearly does not come in and I kind of step away from that but GE was definitely one on one of the top lists and of course play right Dave and Buster's with that earnings day one but a little choppy I was looking at uh, uh, at the long off of the open there it does push that 67 quite aggressively uh, that was the earnings reaction high maybe not the earnings reaction high but that after hours high post the post earnings report there on the one minute so maybe let's like look at the fifth 15 minute yeah let's take a look at the 15 minute right there so that 67 was that high kind of a distinct wick uh in the after hours and coming in the upside pushing into right now so maybe this is the backside uh potentially on dave and busters but let's throw up that vwap and see what vwap is up to we're coasting and consolidating on top of vwap right now on dave and busters so Nothing for me there. Let us know in the chat what you guys are, are trading. I know people are talking about Amazon still. Let's see. I'm going to be waiting for that potential reversion on Amazon if it can even come in. But that's hella strong on the day. That's a grind to the upside. So maybe we got an active buyer on, this, uh, on the tape here with this nice, slow, uh, methodic grind up after we've broken these highs and also pushing into that one, uh, 183, right? Intra-week intra shorts, maybe, maybe a little sweaty uh, in and around that 183 on Amazon. So I'll definitely be watching that if and when Amazon can get close enough to that 183 on the day. Yeah, I mean, yeah, your your ex wife Amazon has been um, has been really really strong today. We did have we're just making jokes. You know, um, Neil was talking about not getting married to stocks on Monday yes. for anyone who wasn't there on Monday. So, you know, I used to be married to um, Eli Lilly. I know you were talking about your your former uh, but amicable you know yeah. divorce from, from Amazon so yeah, yeah. just thought that was um, or amicable just thought that was yeah I, just, I had to sorry but yeah there was actually a positive catalyst with AWS too with regards to those layoffs huh. as reported okay. by the information so uh, that being positive information for Amazon I do agree with you about David Buster doing nothing in VWAP I think this was a nicer look I mean, when it's you holding. first said that move yes it is holding it's which holding. is why yeah. I added and I'm not leaving but honestly at this point if I can take like 83s I'd be pleased as punch. These lower highs are not something I'm a fan of. Maybe we'll just take like half off 
at, at like 80s, because I don't want to be too aggressive. The thing is though too, is this is not the type of trade I normally like. I took this thinking we'd have a little bit of a, a curl back up and it could become a range. Alas, the range right now is like 20 pennies and the spread is about 10 pennies. I do want to quickly talk about uh, this spy trade I was in, because I was, I was pretty happy with this. It's the type of trading I want to be doing more of. So basically, with the spy, like I said, with these ETFs, I try to look less, especially the spy, because it's so, it is the market. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's, a, it's a large part of the market, so I don't want to be trading it purely based on levels. However, what I like to do is I like to use the levels to give me areas to look at on the book. For, for price levels. And actually, there is, I believe, speaking of our social media account, there's a video of me talking about this on our, our Instagram and TikTok, which you can check out. But anywho, I like this because we were really struggling with this 85 area. So I, I started with a small position. I said, if we get it to 90s and behold, I add. That is what we did, so I was pretty happy. I had a little bit more, unfortunately, 85 than I, or 87, I think, than I did at 90. So not, not a perfect average here, but it's all good. And I was starting to take off as we got to 80s. So I ended up having three beak wetters here. Pretty happy with this. The largest, or not the largest piece, I think the last piece I got was at 75. So we took roughly about 15 pennies on this. Pretty pleased, but this is actually still kind of rangy at that 80 to 90 area. The thing is though, if you wanna look at this, we are seeing a harder and harder time getting to 90. We're seeing a little bit of a, a curl here of the top. So this could be a little bit more downside for the SPY. But another name looked like that and didn't end up manifesting like that. So I do not want to be you know, overly, I wanna make sure I'm still discerning and I'm not just taking things based on chart patterns or, or price levels, right? Microsoft was curling down and then Microsoft decided it would like to curl right back up. Thank you very much. So the, to me, things can be really bamboozling. I like the concept of the short here, especially like look at this three minute topping tail candle. There are, there I think I was at some point a lot of comp, confluence, sorry, for this Microsoft short. Then we curl back up to the upside. So clearly that is not in the stars. That's all right. Also Tesla, what are you gonna do at 164.40 if you're short? or if, not if you're short, but if you go down, I might be short Tesla because I do think that this is a nice little option. The other thing though is we make a higher high. So I will be really patient with Tesla here. We call it stressful for a reason. If you want the trade to be a success, you have to go into it with a clear plan. You know, don't be too stressful, don't get too obsessed, and just let it give you what it ends up giving you. And you know, we'll have to see if Tesla ends up giving us a short here because I like that look. But yeah, a lot of, um, a lot of diversions in what some of these mega caps are doing for sure. Meta, pretty strong. Meta, uh, Tesla, Microsoft, all kind of similar looking, but these other ones giving you a bit more opportunity. Nvidia, seen a little bit of chop and turn at the three at this 900. I might have to take out my one minute chart and start scalping. How are you doing? Yeah, no, I, I like that. I like that look on on uh, on Tesla. And yeah, I do agree. If you do, if you do, kind of stay patience, you might get a little blessed lud. So uh, yeah. you know, um, I'm still watching. I'm still watching the, uh, these shorts that I have on. Uh, kind of, I was ch setting up some of these charts. I don't really, uh, I don't really have. Uh, everything here, like I like I've mentioned before, in terms of like uh, uh, charts and market view that I have uh, the same at the back of my, uh, back of my desk. But uh, yeah, I was setting up some charts here because I'm like I don't know. Uh, Adara mentioned the spy, and I'm like, huh, I'm not looking at the spy right now. I should probably take a keep an eye on the spy and some of the some of the some of the large caps there as well, like I normally do uh, back at back at my desk there. So I was setting up some of these charts, but yeah, super strong. Uh, uh, mostly across the board, uh, pretty strong there. And uh, Intel seems like it's still kind of uh, these VWAP sellers or this area, 41s, 40, 4120s, 4130s, been a little bit heavy here. So uh, let's see if that kind of changes, if it changes the tune of its, uh, uh, of its stance or we kind of continue to do more of the same here, but a little bit of a, of a second red 15 minute candle happening here on the NQ. So the question I'm asking is, uh, are we poised for a little bit of a pullback or uh, are we gonna kind of continue back up? This is just a little bit of a consolidation for the next leg up. I have no idea, but I am watching uh, Amazon as you guys have so astutely pointed out, hella strong on the day. So uh, yeah, let's see if some of these trends kind of break uh, for, uh, for a potential backside move there. Uh, again, rough rudimentary line, but you guys get the point there. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily perfect, but it's kind of the, be the change in behavior that I'm looking for there with, uh, with of course, that confluence. And uh, yeah, so people, people in the chat talking about, uh, okay, Frank Boso saying UVXY. So yeah, the VIXI has been uh, kind of interesting. So let's take a quick look at the UVXY. 
um, real quick. And uh, yeah, so I think I think it was yesterday that the VIX kind of popped back into that 15. So we are getting a bit of uh, a bit of that reversion happening today. So a nice little flush. Take, let's take a quick look at the VIX as well. Um, I know I like to keep this on watch whenever we do clip that 15 uh, for potential reversions. And yesterday we did kind of uh, hit that uh, overnight. We still stayed there and then been getting a bit of reversion off of that 15 today uh, as of right now with this market uh, clearly pushing very, very strong to the upside there. Uh, uh, insurance Mama saying, can you guys check on AMD? Will it go to 183? I have no idea where, where it's going to go. I, I can't, I'm not a, I don't got a, uh, uh, what do you call it? I mean, we do have a magic eight ball, but I don't, have, have, I don't have the, I don't have the, the, what are they called? The, 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 the orb, the magic. The orb. I know you, you don't have yeah, the force. The you, crystal ball. Sorry. Yeah, that's, I Oh, apparently so. it's a palantir is what it's called, says Fabian. I need to so look that up. It's called a palantir. You, really? Okay. Huh. All right, so interesting. So I don't have that Palantir, the crystal ball, but uh, sure, we can, we can take a quick look at AMD. I have no idea what it can and cannot do on the day, but we can see what it has done and maybe talk a little bit about that. So AMD kind of very strong alongside with a lot of these chips. Again, I showed you kind of that, uh, that, that sector board I got going on for the chips. And uh, yeah, very, very strong off of, uh, off of this level. Can it come into 183, you're asking? Where is 183? That's a question. Um, kind of asking myself, okay, so 183, not really. Why, I, I'm curious to know why you uh, like that 183. Sure, maybe some, uh, some shelf here, some levels, some resistance, some support, but we've watched this level a couple times already this week. Uh, yeah, let's see if this double top 182 right now is, uh, is at double top high, but we're holding higher highs and higher lows above VWAP, and I'm looking, uh, looking on my other screen here, uh, Intel and Soxel both kind of uh, holding on the bid as well. So let's see how far this can get. Uh, the NQ printing back another green there. So maybe, yeah, a little bit of continuation. Let's see what we got on, uh, on watch here today. So um, AMD, so uh, Ravi saying 82 big sell orders sitting there for AMD. Okay, so uh, maybe we should uh, pull up the tape. So I got that AMD tape here. Uh, I, uh, ironically, uh, just sitting there from last uh, last time I switched tickers. So yeah, let's see if, if that 182 kind of comes in, we'll see it. I'll throw on that size filter so Buddy will show up if there's any significant size. 47 is pushing on this sock cell. This is a sock cell tape here, but uh, an AMD book. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll continue to kind of watch, watch those there uh, as well. 47 holding right now. Intel, let's see if, uh, if this VWAP kind of stays uh, a little heavy on the short side or we get that strength and maybe we push back up. We saw what happened yesterday uh, quite aggressively on some of these names. Um, I think I, I was interacting with uh, AMD, if I remember correctly, and uh, Google yesterday maybe it wasn't AMD. I think it was both it was definitely AMD it, yeah. yeah so um yeah no it was AMD I remember that 75 oh boy yeah that 75 lick grab that we had yeah how can I forget that as soon as I see the chart I'm like yeah okay I recognize I definitely traded this chart yesterday um but yeah that aggressive push back into so once twice thir third time not as great we hold and consolidate above VWAP and continue to close at uh near uh, uh I was going to say near the highs, but yeah, I guess near the highs, but with some strength into the close. So may, are we going to get more of the same today here on Intel? Is that is that a similar kind of action that we're going to get? Or are we going to stay heavy? Intel has a little bit of a catalyst today that's kind of that's pushing that uh, that sell side pressure. We can see that it is distinctly different from the rest of the names. Now, I know that Intel usually does follow the market, uh, maybe not very closely, but uh, quite close as the beta is definitely in and around that one. I'm just going to check it real quick for you guys here on Intel, pulling it up on, oh, didn't mean to do that. Pull that back. Okay. Let me see. Intel. Let's see right here. Boom. Beta is one. Exactly. 1.01. .01. So yeah, it does kind of follow the market in step uh, there on Intel, but on a day like today where it is disconnected, that's something I'm definitely picking up on him picking up on and keeping in mind as uh, okay so AMD may be taking a little bit of a breather as well so I think somebody was saying in the chat that 182 yeah Ravi was saying big sell order sitting there at 182 on AMD seems like those sellers are kind of in charge as of right now so let's see if we get that sentiment kind of reflecting on some of these other names as well let me take a quick look at Nvidia Nvidia are we pulling back Nvidia 
NVIDIA is uh, 900. I guess we did kind of clip that 900 just now. So let's see if that 900 shelf kind of holds or we pull back into that VWAP. VWAP being at that 895 and some change right there. But uh, still, we would be making relatively higher, uh, higher lows based off of this, consoli this kind of base here off of the open and maybe this consolidation here as well. So let's see if we kind of uh, hold that 900 or we come back into VWAP. I have no idea, but I'm going to be patiently waiting and I'll take what the market gives me, uh, uh, especially on a, uh, on a day where, you know, things might not be as in play. The market is definitely kind of in play there with that, <laughs> with that sort of strength pushing right through that 18.3, right through that 18.4, and uh, just holding and consolidating, or just slowing down a little bit uh, in and around that 18.450s mark as of right now. So I don't have too much going on. Chef Joe saying that 20 is a brick wall. What are you guys talking about when you mention that 20? I wanna know if where, where that brick wall is. I'm liking the short maybe potentially right now with this market uh, uh, poised for a little bit of a breather. Third 15 red printing as of right now. So maybe it's time to get a little bit more short on some of these names. Yeah, I was just in a short on Tesla, but I want to talk about this because um, it was a little disappointing, not because the trade went badly, but because we only got a third of the position filled and it was a really small position anyway. So we had a scintilla of shares, a literal scintilla, but I was like, we're going to still trade it, you know, properly. Like we have a whole bunch of shares even though we had very few. I still wanted to get out at least some of that 168. Obviously, we didn't have enough to take out some. We were taking out the full Monty. So we took out here at 168. Took about 25 cents on this. Please just punch. Initially, too, the funniest thing is this didn't even fully fill. So we had a part fill on this, on this buy order of a sell order that was already a part fill. So I was like, guys, like, no one wants me to have any... No one wants me to have any of the smoke in Tesla. No all jokes aside, trade, stocks don't have vendettas. It's just, I thought it was pretty funny that we had this partial fill there. I guess the really arbitrary price I decided of 168.23 was very popular. C'est la vie, pretty happy um, with this trade though. And if we bounce again off that bottom, this looks to me here like it might be a range. In which case, I will be hopping, not in my Range Rover, but in my Tesla to be driving uh, down that range because I do, I do not have a Tesla, a uh, spoiler alert, I don't drive, but I do think that my metaphorical Tesla, uh, you know, in this stock, I think would be a very fun trade. Let's keep bouncing off that 60. Let's keep reflecting, rejecting off that 168.40. If we keep having this, I have no problem driving this one, you know, as we continue to do these U-turns in the market. We might be breaking down here. If we do, I have other, I have other range, ranges drawn out here, like, Tesla, do your thing 21 by all means. But we did just bounce off that 60 area again, so this looks like this could be a spicy opportunity. If this keeps doing what it's doing here, I probably have no problem just kind of getting in and out of this range all day. Spy broke down even further, so I do like the look of that. Uh, I have no, no problems with this here. We did have another move down here in the Spy. Like I said, I try, I'm trying to use charts less, except for just general areas of interest. The general area of interest I'm seeing is we went from using this 9 EMA of support to now using it as resistance. So when we get into these areas of the 9 EMA, that's when I'll be starting to look at the book for potential shorts. I think there could be something in the water here. Also, um, Joanna Brewster asking about the, the alpha beta thing. Honestly, it's not something I'm super uh, familiar with in terms too of like the alpha and, and the beta, I guess. Oh, Alpha's profit. Thank you, Fabian, for that. And then beta, he thinks. He thinks. But yeah, no, it's not something I actually know a lot about, but I, I appreciate you asking. I just want to be really honest. It's, it's definitely not my wheelhouse there in terms of alpha and beta. Yeah, how, how I see kind of uh, beta is like, I, I, I forget what the specific calculation is for it. So let me just pull that up so I can give you guys a better explanation. But uh, so just off the top of my head, it's kind of like how in step with the, with the market uh, a, a ticker kind of moves. Okay, so uh, hold on. With the market kind of pulling back here, I do want to get a little bit involved, uh, like I did mention here on the Amazon. Hello. Haven't seen you in a while, um, but uh, yeah. So let's take a let's take a quick uh, kind of a push into that. See if that kind of comes into fruition. Um, I mean, is, everything's good. Okay. Uh, um, all right. So uh, Intel kind of coming in as well. All right. So let me look up that beta uh, calculation Stock formula. That's what I'm looking for. Um, I don't want to search on Bing. 
I want to search on the Google. That's offensive. <laughs> I would assume you wanted to search on Bing. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, no, I don't want to search. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't really use uh, Bing as a as a search engine, but I guess uh, people have been saying they're a little bit better. Um, but uh, yeah. Really. Hold on one second. Um, yeah, you, do you want to take over while yeah, sure, I kind yeah, of lo- sure look at that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, you, thank you for doing I just, that. I just don't want to speak uh, uh, speak off of uh, off of just uh, memory. I do want to pull up the actual uh, beta uh, equation, and then we can talk talk to, talk about it from there. Yeah, no, I, I like that. Thank you. Yeah, so I um I did get back into the cyber truck that I do not actually drive. Uh, we have we're having that that fifty bounce. If we fail fifty, I'm out. So we're giving this about. 20-ish pennies. I do not love my point of entry. I should have been trying to get in closer to 60s, but I was trying to get it on the back end, and the back end was kind of that 70, 75 area. I'm not going to belabor the point. Say de la vie, la da I was interested. We are, what I'm noticing too is we'll break down below that 50s and then we'll come right back up. Once we start rejecting off the 50s, that's what I'm going to be watching for, and it looks like that could be, here could be where the turntables, shout out to Michael Scott um, from the office. He continues to have a lot of quotes that you can kind of use for trading. Um, Virgus Vice says just <laughs> in there too. It's pretty Virgus good there. Um, but yeah, let's see. We we are having this 50 area hold decently. I do not know how much longer we'll stay there. If if this works out, if we continue to drive up this hill here in our full self-drive mode, I want to be taking some out at 168. Then I'm going to be saving a piece for the dream at 168.20. I usually don't like saving pieces for the dream. Like I said, I'm trying to be scalpier. However. I think this is a pretty realistic dream. I don't think, you know, this is like some waking up and thinking you're a millionaire. I think this is more like, oh, um, I got a dog or something type of dream. I think it's a, it's a more, it's a dream that you could fulfill in reality is what I'm trying to say. And I guess a kind of roundabout analogy here. It's not a pipe dream. Yeah, th- Fabian, kill it. thank you so much, Fabian, for, um, for helping me there with my apparently very deeply confused analogies. Also, it's the Palantir or crystal ball. That's the other word for it here. Um, here's the image, if I can... Pull this up. So here's Sauron uh, from Lord of the Rings with yes. um, the Palantir. I said Lord of the Rings, singular. It's, it's, it's plural, Lord of the Rings. But yeah, um, shout out there to, to Fabian for telling us it is the Palantir. And let's actually look at Palantir on this note because we know, uh, I think Sean and Neil looked at this one right before they, they switched it over here to how to trade. Palantir's rangy. I wasn't even expecting that. So I, got, I got excited there. We had to pull back the chair. I like this range. Bottom, 22.85. Top, 22.97. If you take this with enough shares, you get about 15 pennies. I'd be pleased as punch. So I think this is something I want to be very seriously having a look at. I do... I don't know if I want all that smoke, but I want, I want some of the smoke here. So I think Palantir is going to be ousting one of my side charts. And in fact, it has already taken its place. Uh, the other thing on my side chart too, shout out to Anthony Kerr saying, if you like ranges, take a look at Boeing. I do think Boeing was ranging at one point earlier. The thing that kind of, you know, actually this is interesting with Boeing, is we do have that bottom here, that earlier support area, 187.80 becoming uh, Resistance. We went from support to resistance here at that 187.80 level. I think there's something there, but I don't have as much of an immediate read on it as I do that beautiful Palantir range. My our Palantir or my internal Palantir crystal ball is telling me I want to be involved in Palantir, so I shall be involved in Palantir. Tesla keeps bouncing, so I am pleased as punch. Also, you know, just because I can, let's say hi to. I just want to say hi to Trendla. So here's Trendla. She's killing it here as well. Lots of trending tickers here today. Actually, a lot of ranging tickers, but trend here. Trend to ticker the trading turtle. Always killing it. How are you doing? Thank, Lots thanks of positions there. over here. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got a few positions going on. That market really coming in. I'm like, oh, I got to get into Amazon for the reversion. Market slaps down into 18.4. I'm like, we, we keep talking about this. I got to pick a better vehicle if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to play uh, a market move there. And you look at that. We have some solid strength. And then we start to slow down. Slow down. That strength, that momentum kind of goes away. We, talk, we talked about this yesterday where that morning momentum, that morning volume. Look at this beautiful beautiful volume chart right here uh, as the volume kind of decrements as the morning session kind of comes to a, comes to an end and we push into 11 11 o'clock ish and then look at that price action reflecting quite beautifully and then coming right back in 
aggressively, a lot more aggressively than I kind of anticipated. But again, the move to the upside was quite aggressive. So can we expect a little bit of a, of a, of a mirrored sentiment to the downside? Yeah, sure. Why not? Very aggressive selling to the downside again. So let's see if this 183, that confluence, that weekly kind of resistance on Amazon, let's see if that sellers, those sellers kind of push right back in with that market tailwind right now on uh, on the NQ and the ES. Take a look at that beautiful, beautiful. I, I, sh I should maybe just sh just take the take the futures there on something like that but uh we'll we'll, we'll get to and we'll get to that a little bit later so we, we were talking about beta so i didn't want to i didn't want to lead you guys astray there uh with the definition so let's just uh this is on investopedia and the equation is on here too so it's just a measure of uh measure of volatility of a security that's compared usually to the s p 500 so um the betas higher than one can be it can be interpreted as more volatile. So if if the beta is uh, is like 1.2 or 1.3, you can you can look for it to be more volatile that ticker uh, versus the market itself. And then lower, obviously, the opposite way. Uh, um, what did you say, uh, versa visa, uh, the opposite way, um, being less volatile than the S and P 500. So. Um, Let's go to that equation. So right here, quick, simple little snippet, measure of volatility of a security compared to the market as a whole, usually the S&P 500. And uh, so this, that's a little bit more of the same. So here we go. Calculation for beta. So the beta coefficient, so how you get that one, is, is uh, uh, the covariance divided by the variance there. So the return on an individual stock times uh, times uh, or and then the return of the overall market and you take the take the difference between that not really the difference that you divide those two values I'm not that great at math but this is kind of uh, this is kind of that equation that's uh, that's going into that beta uh, uh, beta calculation there so you're you're calculating the return of an individual stock and then uh, comparing that with the overall market as well to get that coefficient of beta so hopefully that kind of uh, that kind of uh, uh, explains it a little bit better I'm not an expert on this, just reading off the definition, but uh, usually just a quick measure of, uh, of volatility relative to the rest of the market. And I see that a lot of people in the chat are talking about Powell. Yes, Powell's about to, uh, about to come, on the, come on, uh, uh, on the mic in about uh, roughly about 12 minutes there. I think 12.10 is, uh, is, is when he's kind of talking there. We talk about uh, being aware and being kind of... Uh, uh, Factors, factors to consider for trading during the midday session. And then again, I pull up, uh, I pull up that uh, uh, economic calendar here. Today is Wednesday. We had that, uh, we had that ISM, uh, ISM number in around uh, uh, 945, 10 o'clock. And then look right there. Jerome Powell is speaking at 1210. So uh, that might be something. Maybe uh, I got to pull up a, a stream or something like that and maybe read off of what he might be talking about here. Uh, Martin Lawrence, thank you for the super chat. Cannabis news, cron next. More crash than the mar than market, more cash, sorry. More cash than, than market cap. Might be, a, might be a Freudian slip there. When it comes to, to, <laughs> when it comes to cannabis names there. So let's take a quick look at cron, Kronos Group. One of the uh, one of the leaders in uh, in the weed sector there. Um, let's see what it's been what it's been up to. I haven't really looked at this name in, in quite a quite a while there. So uh, let's see what it, what kind of volume it's doing. Average. So it's doing about a, a little bit over average uh, volume on the day. Um, not really any significant arvol it would seem. But uh, yeah. So let's take a quick look at also MSOS, which is the cannabis ETF. So let me get rid of this VHWAP here. Um, let's see what uh, our friend MSOS has been up to on a little bit of a higher time frame. It's a little choppy here. Uh, not really doing too much volume today. Average 30-day volume is 8 million. It's only done about three today. So that's definitely interesting. Holding that 10 level, which it kind of did earlier on in the week there on Monday as well. So let's see what we do with that week low. Week low being at that 990. So kind of like that. Let's take a look at the quick higher time frame because I don't know what, uh, what these tickers have been up to. Although Although I have been observant of that volume that's been stepping into a lot of these weed names over the past few months or a couple, uh, I think 23, yeah, mid, uh, so August 23, look at that volume that kind of comes in to MSOS. If you look at a lot of these other, uh, um, what do you call, 
uh, cannabis names, you'll see a similar kind of kind of pattern there of an interesting volume uh, pushing into these tickers relative to what it was before. So I don't know if that's a result of, of, uh, of the whole uh, wave in 2020, 2021, but uh, you can see that that volume has pretty much sustained, even though the price has not uh, sustained. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of interesting action there with the volume happening on some of these uh, marijuana names. But uh, yeah, let's see if we can catch a bit of a curl. But we have come quite a, quite a long ways, right? Still remember the, 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 the good old days when, uh, when the marijuana names were running to oblivion uh, in, uh, in early eight, uh, 2018, 2019 as well, just pre COVID there on some of those uh, some of those names. So yeah, nice look. AMD coming to the downside. Oh boy, is that is that Amazon short kind of working right now? I'm trying to get some more there, uh, but a lot of these chips taking a bit of a pullback, except for Intel, huh? So we, it really is not behaving like its friends in the bull. I mean, it is what it, it's going to act like. It's going to act like I can, I can, I can kind of anticipate things, but I'm trying to more, uh, I'm trying to react more to like what information I'm being presented with. And it seems like the it, the other thing is like a lot of these other tickers they ran up a lot more, right? Yeah. So. Intel didn't really run, didn't really run up. So the pullback and the reversion on some of these tickers, you can see that Nvidia is doing a bit, a bit of a 50% reversion of its leg that it's had uh, on the day here. So let's take a quick look at that 15 minute uh, and pull it up here for you guys. And yeah, look at that, boom. So off the open, what is the, what is the, what is the push there? That's about a 20 point push, 20 and some change. And how much have we pulled back? About 10, 10 points. So 50% retracement on that NVIDIA. We talk about that 895, uh, 900 kind of level. We pulled up that VWAP earlier. I was like, can it come down into VWAP? Oh boy, can it? And a little bit further, what is the opening price? I don't know if we're gonna get back all the way down there, but take a look at yesterday. We did have a full on reversion in, uh, in and around this, uh, these prices. So are we ranging is the next question I'm kind of asking. So if we are, maybe we are poised to kind of push a little bit further than that 50% retracement. The market is or was quite strongly uh, um, aggressive and uh, was, was quite strongly bid up in, in the morning session. And we are catching a little bit of a relief that I was looking for uh, on, uh, on some of these names here now coming in on the markets as well. So let's see where, how far it can get. Look out below, says Ponzi Fonzi. Yes, I like the short. I like that too. Yeah, also, uh, we have Powell. I found the link from the Fed website. He hasn't started speaking yet. It's a slight lady named Maria France who keeps saying welcome. But I did put the YouTube link here in the chat. This is, um, this is Maria, and this is the 2024 Business, Government, and Society Forum from Stanford. This is the opening keynote, which I'm guessing might go to our pal, Jay Powell. Um, so we're going to have to find out what happens here. I have it in my ear, so I'll tell you guys if, if anyone says anything interesting. Uh, we also, I have subtitles up here as well, so if I, anything pops up that I see visually, I'll be like, hey, everybody, Powell's saying this or someone's saying this. I'll also put stuff up, up in the chat if there's anything to, to keep an eye on there. But right now, Palantir falling a bit. I was giving this a really tight stop. So I was giving this about like five pennies just because, well, no, we're, now we're bouncing. So Palantir, like if it breaks below 80s, I'm good. We got to 80s, I was ready to leave, then it bounced. Why I say 80s is because A, that was that previous area of resistance. B, it was that previous area of support. If we can't bounce there, where will we bounce? So I say that way too seriously for talking about bouncing. But Palantir... We'll have to see what it does here. Also, Tesla initially got really bamboozling and then went back to doing just Tesla things, trademark. I really love Blessla, by the way. That was great. I had to, I had to shout that out. I put that in the chat as well, how much I enjoyed that. But we're actually coming into my other range area too. Uh, so if we bounce off here off this 167.30, this could be a long right now, though. I don't know if that's what's happening. Why I say bamboozlement, though? I got long here. I got out the second that we broke below the 40s. I was really proud of my exit here. Like, it, it, you know, I adhered to my risk management. Yada, yada, yada. As Neil says, sometimes the most, the trades where you adhere to your principles and the trades where things go well, even if they lose, those should be boring trades. So it was boring, but it got a little bit more interesting. And the second I get out, this thing blasts back up to 168. I said, Tesla, how dare you? I feel the disrespect a lot. No, I'm joking. Um, but it's all good, right? The stocks don't care about your feelings. It happens. I got bamboozled, but I stuck to my principles, so I can't, can't be too pressed. I can't be too pressed, la, 
about it. That wasn't even planned. It just kind of nice. happened. It kind there. of flows sometimes, you know? Yeah, we'll have to see. Uh, Jay Lee seeing get out, reload at the bottom for Palantir. Yeah, I'm, I might. We'll have to see what happens here. I, I, I have a really small position. Like, it's larger for me, but it's still very small by, like, human standards. I have really small position sizes. I've talked about this. So we'll have to see what happens here. I think, though, this is getting kind of dicey. Also, Miss Lily. She's above a milli now. So she is, you know, there's a real possibility here, a possibility, if you will, but I, I didn't want to chase it. I was trying to get it at that 776 area because I was watching us fail that. Lily dropped below that with the viciousness as she is wont to do. The spread right now is also pretty hairy. The spread's like 50, 60 pennies. At one point it was a dollar. So I think just because I like that pattern doesn't mean I should get involved. Then I was trying to play Novo as a sympathy play. And if I had gotten filled here, we actually, that, that would have worked out. But I was interested in 60s by the time I was looking at this. We were already kind of in that 55 area. Then we swooped to the downside with a viciousness. We'll have to see here. I think if we potentially bounce off VWAP, this could be a long. But right now, I don't know. This might not be worth the Novo Nor risk on Novo Nor disc. I need to see what we do at VWAP. If we continue to fall below, maybe it's more of a short. If we bounce, and why I say we could bounce here, in addition to the confluence of VWAP, with VWAP, is this earlier support area around 127. So let's see what happens here. It is... It is 12, so we're going to have to see um, what happens in terms of the lesson of the day. Right now, there are focuses, of course, on every, the market's father, Papa Powell. We talk about yeah. ma mother market, <laughs> but we also always have to talk about Papa Powell. So Papa Powell is going to be first and foremost in our minds right now as we are three minutes away from when he is set to take the podium. Right now, a guy named Jonathan Levin is talking about education. So he is not Papa Powell. We have no take on that. Novo Nordisk starting to pop back up. So this might actually be worth, worth the Novo Nor risk to hey get yo. involved. <laughs> love to see what happens. Palantir doing nothing. How are you doing? Um, I'm, still, I'm still patiently waiting, kind of watching some of these positions. Um, nothing too crazy. Uh, we, got a, we got Buddy at uh, 4080 right here with a couple hundred lots. That, and uh, it's, he's been showing up a few times there. Uh, I think it was, the size was there on the initial push. The size was there here. The size was there here as well. Stepped out, maybe stepped out of the way. Some of it gets filled, kind of comes right back in. And then showing up once again at that 4080 on Intel while the market kind of uh, uh, takes a little bit of a breather that, uh, that that bid is kind of holding. And there we go, bang, taken out. Yeah, we talk about we talk about kind of uh, seeing some size there at times. Okay, there we go, 75. So uh, so there was some size sitting at 75 as well on an Ajax and Nasdaq book right there um, uh, happening. Um, so and then there's another set of a couple a couple hundred uh, lots at 4070. So uh, okay, there's a stack. Oh boy, I like that. Let's see what we do with this stack at 75s. Bing bang, there we go. Prints all of them. Right there, look, everybody got printed at that 75, hello. So, all right, so let's see what we do. So we break that guy at 80s, bunch of size gets pushed into, uh, into the bid um, at 75. So a lot of buying kind of happened there, but there's just as much selling and the market's coming in. Let's see if this shelf on Intel will break. Uh, Amazon, I'm still looking for that flush, but this 182.16, a little bit of an interesting area from, a little, from earlier. Let's see if we can crack this at 182 level here as well for a little pullback into VWAP uh, with the market coming on. And yeah, uh, Powell's going to be talking in about one minute. Ponzi Fonzi is asking, what's a 20 2009 Kia Soul with a low fuel light on trade? Again, we talk about these, a little bit of uh, everyday layups, the ones you see every day, you know, on the street, nothing too crazy. We, 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 we've been taking some of these, uh, taking some of these shorts off of, uh, off of lower highs, right? So I don't know what the next trade is, but uh, I am in some right now and just patiently waiting for, uh, for them to come into, come into fruition. Obi's not scared of a squeeze. Oh boy, let me tell you about squeezes. Um, some, of, some, of my, some of my account blow-ups when I was trading back at home happened off of squeezes. Uh, uh, SPI, if you guys remember that ticker, Oh boy, did that that one definitely blew me blew me out of the park, um, and uh, account got shut down off of that SPI squeeze was absolutely wild. And then I really, I, you know what? I'm thankful for that. If I never got, if I never got, uh, not even I, I'm so used to saying shut down now. If I never got blown up off of SPI uh, squeeze, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where I would have been. That tape, that experience that I kind of had, that seat time in that squeeze, and that that emotional kind of uh, fluctuation panic that happened i was like oh yeah I, I'm, I'm happy i lived through that one sean saying nine dollars in the money Ooh. for which ticker nvidia 
<laughs> Nvidia. Hey yo, nice, beautiful. What's your price? What's your price on Nvidia? Now okay, $10 boom, we are making fresh loaves. Congratulations, Sean. That's a beautiful short. I was talking about like, I, I, I played the, sh the, the kind of the turn, but on, <laughs> but on <laughs> but I did it on Amazon. And uh, yeah, Nvidia, better, better vehicle to take that trade, obviously, as Nvidia is one of the market leaders. So uh, nice, nice short. If I'm not in a meeting, Go, Sean. Congrats to Sean with that. I mean, talk about, call it Nine Video. Change the name to Nine Video. And that nine is for the $9 nice trade, of the money Sean. that Sean is on NVDA. Also, Jonathan Levin is now introducing Papa Powell. People are clapping for, um, I can't say it the way Sharif does, but Papa. So, um, oh, here he is. He's taking the mic. Um, so nice looking. Right. I put the link in the chat as well. I'll put it in again and uh, just make sure everybody has that. He is speaking at the Stanford Graduate School of Businesses 2024 Business, Government, and Society Forum. Welcome and opening keynote. So that, that's what's happening here. He said he's going to be briefly discussing monetary policies. So Ooh. he just said that's going to be happening if these subtitles are correct and if what I'm hearing is correct. Um, so my ears are not great, so we're gonna be we're gonna we're gonna be hopeful here. I did get a Palantir before that drop, and please just punch that I did. I was like, you know what, Dara, do you really want to be in Palantir? But like, it's not Powell in here. There's no, you know what I mean. You, you gotta you gotta get out because who knows what Papa Powell will do to the market. I'm gonna pull up the spy right now. Actually, getting a, a little bit. What is this? My three minute on my side chart on the spy. Little bit of a little bit of a bid uh, popping up a little bit here. I'm very sad. I neglected this short. I, I, w I wouldn't have held it that long anyway, but it could have been more in and out, you know what I mean? But opla di, opla da, c'est la vie. It is what it is. As Obi says, where's the next trade? Right now, I'm going to be really honest, I don't really have a lot of plans here. Meta fell a little bit. I think Todd McLean, I want to say earlier in the chat, asking us about Meta. So I'll take a look at this because I noticed this one on my side chart and my eyes went, huh? Let's see what's happening here. Um... We are actually, these are levels I did not draw today, but weirdly they're actually holding. We're bouncing off this 504 area. This actually could be interesting, but we're still projecting off the 9 EMA on a wider scale. That's something I very much want to be cognizant of. So let's see, let's see how this goes. Also, if you are a fan of Sean's Trade, as I know we all are, uh, you know, trying to be members of the esteemed Dollar Club, Sean's Trade, boom, NVIDIA straight fire. Let's go, hashtag stick to it, baby, with four exclamation points. I am not Sean, so he wow. can definitely say that better nice. than me. But Mass, look at this trade. Beauty. I mean, the way that he refilled it here, too, this is, this is gorgeous. So shout out to Sean. Killer Katina, as our friend Sharif, who's currently on a safari, does call him <laughs> sometimes. So nice look. Um, thank you, Jay Lee, for that palette tip. I'm going to have to take a look at this. But this is interesting, too. Jay Lee saying in the chat, in my honest opinion, we'll be lucky to have two rate cuts this year at this point. Anyone else thinking the same as myself? Well, to be fair, we did have Fed Bostics earlier today saying that he sees only one rate cut this year, and he doesn't think we'll get to 2% until 2026. So there definitely is a little bit more hawkishness in the Fed right now. Powell actually just mentioning 2% himself, so I need to go keep my eye, keep apprised of that and see what he's saying that in relation to. Um, Fed Powell says, Fed is not and does not seek to be climate policymaker. Oh, that's about the climate. Okay. He says the outlook's still quite uncertain. Likely to, um, Fed likely faces risks, risks on both sides of its mandate. Those risks continue to move into better balance. Fed continues to believe policy rate likely at peak for this cycle. So that's a bullish side. He's saying that he doesn't see any more hikes in this cycle. Um, nice. So to keep public's trust, Fed must avoid mission creep. So... Uh, lots of laughs happening in the background here as well. But yeah, so some nice talks coming here from Papa Powell. And I lost my Papa monitor. Here he is. I was like, where's my tab with Papa Powell on it? So here he is. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this um, to see what he has to say there. But a lot of the market getting a pop. I really should have taken that meta long. So yeah, that I have to forget about that because I did not take that long on meta. How are you doing? Uh, still kind of uh, holding on. So, yeah, he, he did kind of come on. Market does catch a, a little bit of a bid here. Amazon taking a little bit of a bid as well. Um, so I'm just observing, kind of being patient. I'll react to any sort of uh, uh, price action that might that might come through. Uh, like I've mentioned before, I do like to like to trade uh, uh, mainly off of uh, mainly off of price action there. Uh, and again, volume being one of one of my uh, one of my top uh, indicators as well. Uh, it's it's interesting how uh, I was I was talking to a few traders. Some some traders is trading off of line charts, and I'm like, damn, like why like. 
how do you, you you trade off the close or something like that? I have no idea, but it's a, it's a, it's kind of uh, it's it's hard to comprehend um, how how that can happen. But I definitely I need I need the candles, I need the open high low close, I need the volume uh, to kind of build that picture, and uh, yeah, also I need need, a, need the tape as well. I like uh, I talked to some of my friends; they trade straight off of charts, and that's fine, right? There's there's def, there's it's very valid, but I like the tape. Like there's a lot of information going on on the tape and the book and uh, some of the some of these charts as well so uh, Adrian says line charts are clearer yeah I guess I mean it depends on your perspective right uh, it depends on how you trade and maybe some of your playbook as well so if it works if it makes you money then I who am I to say anything about that um, nobody but uh, at the same time it just uh, kind of a uh, kind of mind mind blowing a little mind blasting uh, for, for me to kind of even uh, fathom how that can be done effectively over time. But uh, I got a lot to learn, so I have no idea. Yeah, that's actually a great transition because we're actually going to be having Le Neil's lesson of the day right now, speaking of learning. So let's All hear right. from Neil in the purple shirt, which I just noticed now. Welcome, lesson of the day. You can either get played by the algos or you can try to play the algos. Now, what I'm going to talk about here is not necessarily the easiest thing to do, but if you can put it into your toolbox and sometimes anticipate that there's going to be gamesmanship, then you can, you can possibly make more efficient trades, get bigger gains, and do not get those shakeouts that frustrate us so much when we have the, the correct price area and even the correct price uh, uh, direction but then we're just not able to hold on to the trade because you get shaken out. And the first thing's first. So, like, what I'm going to describe is usually centered around a, a price area, an area of interest on a stock that almost everybody is going to see. So you're talking about a key uh, support level, a key resistance level, uh, an obvious round number, stock gets to $100, an NVIDIA 1000. Like, these are the types of things where you can kind of anticipate sometimes there's going to be a lot of gamesmanship. And most of that's going to be done by institutional orders, by algos. When everybody knows where stops are likely to be, you can either roll with that punch and just take your trade how you, how you always would. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Or maybe you can anticipate an altered move around that price area which will not be subject to the same kind of shakeout, but then give you that upside. So I want to talk about some ideas with regards to that. I'm going to start with uh, one of the ones at the open that we discussed this on the morning show pretty much, I feel like, all the time. And the amount of times that you're going to be able to see this set up, it's just multiple times a day with the stock in play. And that's why I want to start here first. And the example I'm going to use is Reddit because I think it's a fun one. And you saw... After Reddit came to market, I mean, look, it had a pretty decent debut. Let's go, I can go, I can go daily chart first, I suppose. Like, it had a pretty decent debut. But after it pulled back in, it should be obvious what I'm going to talk about here. It started selling off and then made it back to $44, which was that low on the daily you saw. That $44 level was already the bottom, and it put it in on April 1st. It wasn't a joke. It made a fresh IPO low. And at that point, you're looking at a double bottom on the daily. Now, an IPO doesn't have a lot of historical price action. So almost everybody is going to be saying, oh, that's a double bottom at the, at the, at the post-IPO low at 44. That's got to be a support level worth trading off. Yeah, people wanted to go short if it breaks. Yeah, people wanted to go long if it's going to do a hold. So how do you manage to be in this trade when it obviously does break the previous day support level, it does wick the bottom and then eventually run. So what's a way to not get stopped out there? There's a couple ways you could do it. One way to do it would just be to just give it an extra dollar. Okay, well now you're just going to go long on the way down and say instead of getting out on a break of the previous low, 44 and a half, or a break of the even, you're just going to give it to 43. Fair enough. I think that's perfectly reasonable. But that is not necessarily the most efficient risk reward way to do it. Because if you do that on a stock like Reddit, there's going to be a lot of slippage in your trade, and you might not be risking the extra dollar. You could be risking an extra dollar fifty, maybe even two bucks, and that might not fit your, fit your risk to reward. If you want to try to still have your same style of trade where you have a tighter stop, you've got to almost anticipate that they're going to get run. And what that looks like is you just sit this move out here, 
at the open, when it makes the run in the bottom, you're anticipating it could happen. If it continues and flushes through the low, you don't have to trade it. Great. You're not holding it long against you. You're not anticipating where you're going to get in. But if it does a snap back, and this is a three minute, if it snaps back and holds, now you've got two setups you can play. The aggressive setup, you can very plainly see the 44 and a half support. There's your wick underneath. It holds 44. The aggressive play is just go long here with a stop there. That's one way to do it. But if you're even more conservative than that, you're anticipating the whipsaw action, anticipate it both ways. It then goes right up to if it's going to be a bearish day, right to the previous close and gets a bit of a rejection. Now that's the spot where anybody thinking short Reddit because it's been going down is looking for short opportunities. So that's where bears are like, ah, I'm just shorting into that upward move at the open and then it pulls back in. It's a popular play. You've seen us do that short and work all the time on our live show. But what I think is your best and most conservative setup is the second it holds this high or low, and that's right in here at that 45, the next even dollar, you see the consolidation, one bottom, holds bottom, breaks this candle to the upside. It's about 45.15. You have reasonable stops. You can stop it here for 35 cents. You can stop it there for about 65 cents. And that way, you've got some people that were shorting. You've got some people that were long and got stopped out. You have maybe even some trap shorts down there. And you've got a very high risk to reward entry. What this requires you to do, however, is see that stock in the price area and be willing to sit out a lot of action at the open for that perfect setup. I mean, algo's running stops at the bottom, algo's running stops at the pre-market high, then getting a pullback, and then still looking for your entry. Requires a lot of patience, but because you're getting a tighter stop entry with some extra confidence, it allows you to then have more shares with that tight stop, and then have the potential upside for what you got over there in Reddit. So I think it's, it's not always the easiest trade, but it's a very valuable one to have in your toolbox when you really, really like a price level, and you want to get the shares in, and you don't want to get wicked out. You want to get that good solid entry, but you also want to do it with a lot of confidence and maybe your bigger position. So the other thing I want to talk about here is just the obvious, and we've seen, I mean, how many times do we see this, uh, where you don't, you have a price area, but you don't necessarily have, you know, the exact entry point off a key price level. And I think this is a difficult one for people to comprehend because, and actually let me go to a 15 minute on Tesla to better explain this. Like you can see a stock when it's in a downward trend and it breaks to the downside and you would have heard me on the live show and I talked about this yesterday even. You know, you're keying in, on a, keying in on a 168 which is a very important price for the stock previously when it was trading in this area and you're looking for sellers out in front of it. So what ends up happening a lot of times is if you have a really good resistance spot or even a really good support level, you can, you can have failure to get to that price. And what that simply means is, it's like if it gets there on that rubber band action, it's like it's too strong. If it gets to that 68 level, then the bounce off the top, bounce from the bottom might actually be too strong. It almost needs to stall out. Like the sellers are getting in front of it and you have to be willing to take the trades in front of it. And the best way to do that is to play the wicks. And what I, what I mean by that is you're not going to get to your stop order at that 68, but you can say, okay, well, if it's showing me resistance at 166 and a half in here, and I can zoom it uh, over here, 166 and a half, it's showing me that resistance, don't take that fill. If I know 68's a top and it shows me 68 half once, then let it break 68 and a half, looking for the fill here, where you're giving it the extra 50 cents, knowing you've got 68 behind you, and then that way, you've got two things working for you. If you're holding the 68 anyways, you're risking a dollar instead of a dollar 50. That's one thing working for you. The second thing working for you is you've got people shorting here that are just gonna stop out early. And when they stop out, you're actually getting in. So that wick top, you're getting an entry with some relief pressure as well. But just like the example before, what is the risk of that trade? You are sitting out the short if it doesn't actually break that local high the, the second time. If it doesn't break and form that wick, well then you're not really getting that entry. But there are times 
where it's that far away from your anticipated resistance where you want to try to give it a little bit of extra room. And if you can do that and find ways to do it, you can be in a trade, say against the, the short term momentum with a little bit more confidence because you're entering after the algos have already stopped a bunch of people out. Like you're finding an entry past a bunch of other pain points. That's the key with the example that I showed you with Reddit, and that's the key with the example here, what happened on Tesla. You're getting in after people have been stopped out. And sometimes you wanna look for those pain points and say, I'm not gonna go in until other people have gotten out of the trade because then there's less resistance when it starts to fall back uh, into that downside. And the key with these trades are, the more you like the price level, the more convicted you are in that area for trade, in that direction, the more, toolbox, the more things you want in your toolbox around that price area, especially ones that would allow you not to get wicked out. And I can say this as a trader who I've shown them many times getting top wicked and bottom wicked. You know that when that happens to you, that you were right about the area of interest and you were dead right. However, you just needed to adjust your entrance or exit strategy based on that price area. So that's why today's lesson is important because you have to have these in your toolboxes so you can trade the really big levels without always getting run over. Sometimes you'll make top wick and bottom wick, but you don't always have to make top wick and bottom wick if you're going into the trade anticipating the algos want to run you. Now, if you anticipate it, sometimes you won't get into the trade at all because you're being picky. But when it does work, you're gonna absolutely hit some bangers. And you've gotta have it in your toolbox, play the algos, don't let them play you. You've gotta bring other, other ways to step up your game because they're not going anywhere. So you can adjust or die. That's the lesson of the day. Sorry, I have a potato wedge in my mouth. That's my bad. No, that's very much my bad. Um, thank you so much, Neil, for the lesson of the day there. Right now, Powell continuing to speak. I'm so sorry. Um, live TV, live TV. Thank you, baby, and Ramin, for that. I, I appreciate you guys um, going back to there for a second. It's all, we're all good. I should not have been putting a potato wedge in my mouth as the lesson of the day ended. So there we go. Also, here we go with uh, Powell continuing to talk to a man with glasses whose name I didn't catch. But he's at the Stanford Graduate School of Business at their 2024 Business, Government, and Society Forum. So let's talk, uh, thank you again to Neil for the lesson of the day, and you can actually catch it with that URL or that QR code, sorry, that's a QR code. Catch that there with Neil and his glasses and his lessons of the day. Also, thank you so much to Martin Lawrence with the 199 Super Chat. Can you guys do some trading, a swing trading lesson soon? Question mark, exclamation point, question mark. And yeah, I think that's a really good question. I know a while ago, Sharif and I did one, I believe, at the end of December, which was, investing versus trading, but I think swing trading would be a really a really great lesson to do, and I know Sharif does swing trade as well, so he definitely has some insight on that. Yeah, I think I'll definitely talk to him about that once he gets back from hanging out with the lions, tigers, bears, oh my, plus gorillas on his safari, so I will let him know on that. I've been on, uh, th thank you, I appreciate that that story, Adair. It's a, it's a, we're all good. I appreciate the um, the little the little thing there, and I like that you thank you guys for, for cutting to yourselves. It's live, right? So things are going to happen, including, you know, people eating potato wedges at inopportune moments. But that's why we're all here to, to learn and <laughs> grow together. Those wedges weren't too bad. They were, yeah, they were not bad. Yeah, I just had one in my mouth as, as we did the throw over. So that, nice. was where, that was where the problem uh, was lying there. But, well, hi, Obi. How are you? How are you doing right now? Good, good. Like sorry, sorry I'm, a, I'm a little late there. Uh, I was just grabbing some coffee. Um, but, uh, yeah. Uh, what happened while we were gone? Um, I guess I covered the Amazon. I was like, well, if it's going to bid right back up, it doesn't really have much follow through. Sure, we were a little bit in the money, over, over 50 pennies in the money there. Um, but uh, not what I was looking for. I was looking for a push down into VWAP. V doesn't really come in. If it's going to bid, that's perfectly fine. I'll get out at, at pretty much break even and maybe potentially get a better price. But that 183 weekly high, we are, we are pretty much uh, knocking on the door of that, uh, of that area there. Look at, the, look at the NQ and the ES. Distinctly, distinctly different there. So uh, I guess I am uh, I'm still short 
on the Intel, I was like, I want to get more. I covered, oh boy, did I cover pretty much everything right there. Uh, this is a good place where I could have definitely picked up a little bit more there. So I got to go back and on the review, uh, kind of reassess some of that there. Um, I will take off Amazon for now. Uh, let's put up, uh, pull up SoxL here um, on, uh, on, this, on this chart real quick. It's on the Amex. Boom, there we go. All right. Excuse me. So, SoxL did come back into VWAP uh, over the past uh, 15, 20 minutes. So, where was that? That was in around uh, 12, 12, 10. And then, uh, I guess, still kind of consolidating sideways there on top of VWAP while the market takes a, takes a little bit of a pop to the upside. Intel making fresh lows. So, Intel kind of pushing into that level we talked about that daily is around 67 exactly. So, we're, we're on top of that level right now. So, let's revisit some of that charting that we saw on Intel real quick. Uh, to see what Intel may or may not be up to here. So uh, a little bit of a fumble on my part where I'm not, uh, I'm covering most of my position here. Like I think it was, it was over 70% of the position uh, cover on top of this 80 and then I uh, don't really reload uh, back here on top of that VWAP. So that's a bit of a fumble on my part there. We're getting that uh, little bit of aggressiveness, but let's take a quick look uh, right there on, uh, uh, take a quick look left on Intel just to check that out. So right here, previous week low, also kind of the monthly low. You look at it on the, on the daily, you can see that last week, that was uh, a bit of the low right there and we are testing that. What was that low price? We said 57, so it's, it was around 60. So 57 is that price. We kind of, uh, we come into it a little bit there just to hopping on top of that 60, a little bit of a hover. And now we're catching a bit of a bid. Let's see where this bid kind of takes us here. Soxel bidding up as well. But Intel significantly weaker than the rest of those, uh, the rest of the chip names, uh, the rest of, uh, of uh, the market as well as uh, the market kind of bounces and all Intel can do is bid up like five, 10 pennies there. So. <clears throat> Uh, NVIDIA as well with a little bit of a, of a bid happening here. So let's take a quick look at that one. Um, NVIDIA held, okay, so it does hold VWAP there. So it kind of comes right into VWAP, uh, kinda, uh, back through yesterday's high and then holding VWAP right now on this 15 minute chart here and the market catching a little bit of a bid as well. So I'm um, kind of uh, looking at this, uh, looking at this sock sell position being like, all right, well, sure, Intel isn't, uh, isn't catching as strong of a bid, but if sock sell is going to make some fresh highs, I do want to stay, uh, stay kind of nimble with that one. But that 47 looking quite nice as we attempted to push through that 47 and that sideways consolidation can't really get through that 47. Let's see if we can do it now with this, with the strength kind of coming back into the market, uh, or do we make a relatively lower high below that 47? So uh, let me know what you guys are trading. I can see that uh, Jay Powell is still kind of talking uh, up there. Um, has he said anything significant, or are they just? It's uh, is it unrelated to uh, kind of what's going on here? It's pretty unrelated. This guy's not like his questions are, are pretty oddly worded. So he's like, oh, so this thing. What do you think about that? And it's like that's not uh -huh. really. It's not really a question. A lot of this stuff, it's like if, you, if you've if you heard Powell talk, you kind of know what he will, will and won't speak on, right? So he won't speak on any policy that isn't related to financial policy. So to me, to, I, I got to say, I have, I have a couple notes, I think, for this guy asking him the questions. But but no, Powell hasn't said much. If he does say anything interesting, I will let you guys know. I am getting some of these uh, sound bites as well coming in from Benzinga, so keeping an eye on that. But really, he hasn't said much. The, the biggest thing he said is monetary policy is tight. He also does say, though, that he has faith in their policies and what the Fed Fed's done, so he he does give the Fed a decent amount of credit for bringing inflation down. So take that how okay. you will. I thought that was kind of interesting. That was a specific thing he has said that he said, you know, we are we are doing what we need to be doing. So patting themselves on the back just a yeah. skosh over gonna, there. But also, yeah. I do want to take a look at this A bus. Thank you, Darwin, for bringing this up. This is Arbutus Biopharma, and apparently this is not confirmed, but traders are circulating this. I'm assuming probably on on X and social media, that the Arbutus Genovant versus Moderna patent infringement lawsuit um, claim has some order court documents. So uh, this is not super not super specific news here, but something about, uh, again, if I hear anything specific, because this is just a rumor right now, I will let everyone know. Oh, they're just circulating the documents. That's the issue. They're literally just circulating documents. So there we go. Um, so these documents here, um, this is Artibus and Genovant 
versus Moderna. So interesting, look, these documents circulating around here. Airbus, or sorry, not Airbus, a -bus, Ar Arbitus getting a nice little bounce here. This actually looks like it could be a potential flat top break. Volume's not bad, especially given the lateness of this move, about 2.68 mil. So we're kind of seeing this a bit of this flat top I think we could break out of. I'll keep an eye on it. Not really necessarily my type of trade always, but thank you very much, Darwin, for bringing this to everybody's attention here so we can give everybody the news. As Darwin just said here too, new high of day on this one. Also, really quickly here, I do want to talk about Palantir. Jay Lee called it, you know, trying to get this one a little bit lower as it gets down into this area. I did it, and I think the thing is too is I'm happy I didn't, even though, I mean, shout out to Jay Lee for calling this. I just, I, I'm really trying to stick with trades that are more my style of trade, right? So me initially getting involved in this, it was a super rangy look. That's the type of thing I'm comfortable with, right? I got out when I realized we were gonna have the Powell, the Powell drop and I just didn't really wanna deal with that. And then we pop back up, but, but because we're not in a range now, it's just not my type of trade. So I have to take the type of trades I'm comfortable with. So there we go. Um, that's, that's what I think is, uh, I just kind of wanted to touch on that with regards to PLTR. Also, it's 12.30, so we're kind of late, I guess, on the lesson of the day. Uh, we might, okay. we'll, we'll do it now, and then we'll just wait a little bit. And usually we'll do it at 12 and 1. Obviously not happening right now, but let's do it right now here, and then we'll get into the second one, I guess, a little bit later to balance everything out. So we will do the lesson for the second time of the day. And, of course, this is talking about trading the afternoon. And what's interesting, too, is this lesson becomes more and more apt the closer to the afternoon we get, I guess, because earlier we did this right freshly in the midday. Oh, sorry, I just need to get my notes. Oh, did I close my notes? Okay. Uh, we did this initially right fresh in the midday. We were right off the opening. Now we're getting closer and closer to power hour, which as we will discuss in this lesson, is a very interesting part of afternoon trading. So what is trading in the afternoon? As self-explanatory as it kind of sounds, it is trading that happens in the afternoon, it takes place from two to 4 p.m. ahead of the market close. And much like the trading that you see in the morning, this afternoon or late afternoon trading does tend to be a little bit more volatile because traders, market participants, and institutional investors are saying, all eyes on me with regards to the market. They want to take every look at the market. They're back from lunch. They're preparing for the close. They want to see what positions they want to add and get involved in. So there are a few more eyes on the market because of this. And as such, the action does tend to ratchet back up. And OB was talking as well about squeeze opportunities. Those are some of the many characteristics that we have in afternoon trading. Yeah, so some of these characteristics, again, as Adara just mentioned, more eyes on the market, so volume potentially coming right back in and uh, maybe mirroring some of uh, some of the morning action as well. So uh, we kind of talked about that, uh, what can happen in uh, in different scenarios. But yeah, a lot of volume kind of coming back in. So similar similar concepts there to uh, to the. Uh, to the opening session there, um, and uh, with with that stronger volume coming into the close and the closing uh, closing prints as well, the closing imbalances happening as uh, as well. So. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, we talked about how depending on depending on what's been happening, you, maybe you have a big, bigger picture. You have you've had the rest of the day, the whole day's kind of price action to tell you a story, to build up a story, and then going into that power hour, maybe there is something there you might be you might be looking for uh, for that continuation or maybe that reversion or whatever whatever uh, whatever you you think may be there, but uh, definitely something to something to keep an eye out on. And the market market is tanked here as I speak so I'm glad I'm still short I added on to that sock sell because I was like I like that hold below that 47 but oh boy should I have added on to that oh Intel and uh, I, I see I see that I see that Sean's uh, Sean's really enjoying himself here so I'm gonna assume you you still have a little bit of that Nvidia short yeah, damn oh my unity's oh, sorry. beautiful 169 short on Tesla so let's take a quick oh, look at Tesla I, um, wow mid mid, uh, mid lesson so all right, cool. Um, nice little wick, wick of the highs there on Tesla, and yeah, the market, market pulling back a little bit. 75s saying so. 168.75s. Uh, Sean is short that. So about six pennies off the top. Damn! Talk about sniping, sniping those tops and bottoms right there. Absolutely beautiful. Nice trade. All right, let's go back to the lesson here. Um, so uh, characteristics of that last hour. So price action tends to pick up if that volume again with the volume, right? I like that volume indicator to kind of uh, to kind of bring things into fruition. So if you see that volume kind of expanding going into the end of the day, uh, maybe. 
maybe there could be something there, right? So we are pushing into, we're still in the midday right now, so I can't really show you an example of, uh, of today, but uh, yeah, let's take a quick look at something that may have increased in volume going into the end of the day. So we can, uh, I have Nvidia up right here, so I can show you right away, right off the bat. Um, Look at this. So uh, morning session. So a little bit more clearer a couple days ago with that strong morning action that we had, that push into 922s and then a strong flush in the midday kind of consolidating. But take a look at this. The end of the day in around 2, 2, 2.30, look at that volume, slight little pick up with, uh, with a strong volume candle going into the close. So that's definitely a little bit of the imbalances and the closing print as well. But you can see a little bit of that volume expansion going into the close. So potential, uh, potential for things to set up going into the close as well. Uh, again, volume dictating on that. So some characteristics for that power hour end of day session trading. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And also, you know, make sure if, you, if you're liking the lessons, if you're liking what we're doing here, make sure to give us a like and a subscribe uh, because, yes. you know, we, we like being here with everybody. and We're always having a great time and we do bring market news and info every single day. So come check it out. But also another important thing to keep in mind are important times of day during the afternoon. So, of course, it's a little bit meta because generally this week we're talking about times of day. Within the afternoon, though, there are two really key things to keep in mind in terms of time. And one of those is going to be power hour. So that is that uh, time of day, this term often used to describe the last hour of the trading day. So that's going to be from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern. Eastern, sorry, which is when the markets try to get, tend to get extra exciting. And with the end of the trading day just an hour away, traders are either looking to get flat in the day. A lot of times, if you're not swing trading, if you're going to do intraday trading, especially at a prop firm, you cannot have any positions out there waiting. You have to make sure everything's closed. So that might be some of the impetus there. There's also sometimes people wanting to get involved in some scalps, getting involved in this market volatility before close. Halfway through the power hour around about 3.30, things are going to get extra spicy and extra exciting as those early imbalances hit, which brings me to the imbalances. Usually the, I'm not very good with the slides. I was pretty happy with the timing there. Imbalances, um, use the market on close or MOC imbalances, they'll reflect the market on close orders, right? So those orders allow traders to buy or sell at the last available price of the trading day. And particularly large buyer sell imbalances on particular stocks can suggest a large amount of institutional interest. And you have our final imbalances sitting at 350. So you'll always hear Sean and Neil bring those to you right away, straight away with the viciousness and the swiftness at that desk over there. Uh, and because they are, they really can move the market, especially if you have a significant buy or sell imbalance. You'll see if, uh, if you know, I'm on the big desk on the scanners, I'm like, oh, what's explaining this move? No catalyst, just an imbalance. So they really can move the market around. And with that in mind, you also have to keep in mind some other important factors when you're talking about the close or the afternoon in general, which include... Um, you want to keep an eye on these scanners, as I just mentioned, right? So there tends to be an influx of activity on these scanners during power hour, which can give you a sense of some of the names that might be into play heading into close. You also want to check your earnings uh, calendar because a lot of these names that are set to report after the bell tonight, we have Levi's. So we'll have to, you know, we're to put on those jeans there and also blackberry yes um tonight as well so these actually could get interesting so maybe we'll see if we have a little bit of movement there on these names setting into the close today because the extra eyes on these names setting into earnings when combined with the overall excitement hubbub for insert word here of power hour can lead to some extra potential spicy opportunities and last but not least these economic releases are a little bit more of a common concern in the pre-market in the afternoon but they can matter in the afternoon because there are some numbers like consumer credit that are often scheduled for Reese at three. And we saw the last consumer credit number we actually did have a move down on. So these actually, these numbers can be important, of course. Also FOMC meetings will take place around two. So right as the, as the afternoon session begins, they usually start at two at the Q&A sitting to around 3.30. So you wanna make sure you're aware of what data is getting released and when. So shout out to Live Trader and Trading with Trader TV Live in the chat. 1,000 likes and this emoji of, I think, cash. So, woohoo, let's see. Um, we're going to pump up, pump it up. I don't know. I don't know what I'm. It's a, yeah. We're a good day. Let's get, pump, let's get those, let's get those mic, likes so. and subscribes up. That's, that's, that's what he's saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you, thank you, Adara, for uh, for uh, the lesson there. And uh, yeah, um, kind of a pop back up 
on the market there. So we saw that strong flush, and all of a sudden, we get that bid right back up. So it's like, all right, well, that was corrected quite aggressively and uh, quite quite, uh, quite fast there. You can see that NQ and, and, uh, and the ES. Look at that wick uh, on the 15-minute candle. Sock sell, oh boy. I thought this was gonna. I thought this was gonna be uh, pretty nice there, pushing into that 46. But that VWAP, that that 46.20 holds quite well, and I think AMD may be a little bit uh, of a factor there as well. So you can see AMD, a nice little pop back up, uh, very aggressive off of that VWAP. So uh, that's that's pretty interesting as well. Let's take a quick look at Nvidia. Nvidia jumps right back in to that 900 or that 899 on that push right back up. So let's see if we make a lower high here or we kind of uh, we push back and si uh, consolidate sideways we can see that the the both the ES and the NQ are holding up quite well in terms of uh, where they are relative to relative to the extension that they've had in the morning session right now so we're holding that that upper quartile of that range for sure it's probably even a little bit tighter than that but uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say yeah we're holding that upper third at least uh, for now on uh, the market and a lot of these other names as well so I'm watching, I'm watching AMD, I'm watching Nvidia, I'm watching Soxcell, I'm watching Amazon as well. Amazon gets right back up, okay, interesting, it gets back up to that 182.75 and comes right back in. So maybe we are poised a little bit better for the short now on the Amazon. So you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna quickly kind of move over to that one and see what that one is starting to look like on the tape there. But this kind of shimmy, this dance that we just did, the shake and bake that just happened here across the board, that's a little concerning, uh, that might be, that might be setting us up for something or nothing, but I'm going to be patiently waiting and uh, watching uh, some of these some of these tapes for anything to potentially come in as well. But uh, yeah, let us know in the chat what you guys are trading here. Uh, gold just shy of 2,300. Eh? Okay, all right. So let's take a quick look at gold. I know that gold has been pushing uh, some fresh highs as of late. So let me just pull up these CFDs. So yeah, 2,300 test on the gold. Let's take a quick look at the weekly here, taking uh, a larger time frame into perspective uh, just to show how strong this gold has been. So all-time highs on gold as of right now, as of today actually, um, Fresh highs, 2300. So uh, shout out to all, all, all my gold bugs there. Uh, finally, finally in the money. Um, well, maybe depending on where you bought, right? But uh, yeah, it's fresh, fresh highs on gold itself. You know what? That that reminds me of. Let's take a quick look at the Dixie. Uh, see what our friend the Dixie, the U.S. dollar, is up to here. What is this? That means absolutely nothing. Um, all right. So okay, so a little bit of a, a little bit of insight. Okay, so we did have that strong push at the beginning of uh, or going into the middle of uh, this 2022, 2023-ish. But uh, over the past few days, I've been watching it. We've been we've been testing that 105, 103, kind of a kind of a chop in that range. It would seem, and uh, today a bit of a pullback, perhaps. Uh, happening on the weekly here. So let's take a closer look. Uh, 105 highs. We're pull we are pulling down a little bit here. So uh, potentially uh, some moves may be expected off of that one there. But yeah, let us know in the chat what you guys are up to, what you guys are trading, any names you'd like us to look at, and we'd be more than willing to kind of uh, take a look at some of those. Yeah, we love, we, look, we love looking at charts, right? We love looking at names. So absolutely let us Charts. know. Also, I have to address... Um, Paolo and this man with the glasses are still talking. <laughs> and also, he asked him, one of, Paolo, one of the um, most eyebrow-raising questions, both for me and also, I think, for Paolo, which was, if you had a crystal ball and you could know about one thing, what would you want to know about? And Paolo's response was to be flummoxed, which I think is a fair response to that question. Yeah, um, yeah, he was like, I don't know if it would just be one thing. And the guy was like, well, come on, if you could only know one thing. Yeah. And yeah, honestly, I don't even remember Paolo's response because it, it was pretty inconsequential. But I just think it was really funny that you have the opportunity to talk to the Fed chair in front of a group of business students. Yeah. And that's the question you ask. So I just, I kind of got a kick out of that. I, have to, I mean, I make puns all day, so I'm not here to judge, of course. But <laughs> I just thought that was, yeah. that was pretty entertaining. 
also entertaining is this spy. I'm pretty sad I didn't scalp out of some of this earlier. I didn't see this move down to 520. This might have been more on a wick basis. I should have punched out some at 520.10, though, for sure. But I did add a bit to this position. We're still failing 40s. If we break decisively above the 40s, I will be outy. But I've been having a lot of fun trading this buy earlier. I will say, too, I was looking at this as we had this move down, and then I didn't catch it. And then, of course, by the time we fell, we fell. So a little bit upset I missed it, but I know I wouldn't have held on to it that long anyway. I know what I'm like. So it's like, Adara, don't go chasing waterfalls. Don't go crying over spilt milk on a type of trade. You know it's not really in your nature to take or take to that extent. So say la vie, shake it off, um, to quote Taylor Swift, or to quote a Taylor Swift song that Sean mentioned earlier, I guess, there. Shake it off. Look, look at what these markets are doing. We're, we're quoting Taylor Swift over here. But no, it's all good. I'm still in Palantir. Uh, but Palantir is kind of doing a whole lot of a lot of nerthin. So let's look over at P to the L to the T to the R. Uh, yeah, so if we break below this view up area here, back at 75s, so you're giving this like three pennies. I'm out. I was interested initially in the top of this range at 89. We're not getting that. I would have been cool with 81s, 83s. So we had enough of a position we could take a couple shares here. Again, I do not think that's what we're going to be getting, just how this is moving. I think we're now rejecting off that 9 EMA. So I, I don't, we, we might be able, we might end up losing a little bit on this or getting flat. I, I think I need to look away from Palantir. My own Palantir or crystal ball, shout out to Fabian for giving us that phrase, is telling me that Palantir is not in the cards for me today. There are not a lot of range opportunities on that, so. On to the next one, say la vie. Tesla, interesting though. Um, someone earlier was saying perplexla about this, which is a new Tesla pun I like. I'm gonna switch to the five minute because I like my one minute for my Nvidia and my spy, but not for a lot else. Yeah, Tesla, we're still kind of accumulating around that earlier top that we had. This very clear double top, 168.40. I was short in this a couple times that we tried to go long and it went a little wrong. All good, keep going. We made a slightly higher high, but now we're continuing to come down here. Now we're bouncing off this 90 MA. So to me, it looks like there are some possibilities. I think I'm gonna probably have to look at this tape and chart a little bit longer to see how it's interacting before I decide to interact. Did you end up taking um, your pal Amazon in a little coffee date? Did you end up, I guess, no, you're not involved in Amazon. No, so uh, I, I guess, yeah, it was a, it was a, little, bit of a little bit of a date. And uh, let, me, let, me pull, let me pull it up here uh, while I talk about it. So yeah, I guess, uh, hold on, I'll pull it up first. Uh, boom! Right there. So there, there's, there's Amazon, and uh, yeah, might have been something, but I uh, just, uh, I guess, left her at the door because uh, uh, it kind of came right back, and I was like, no, 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 that's not really what I'm looking for there. But that, that quadunk to the downside, absolutely beautiful. Look at that selling aggression right into the lower end of this kind of short-term range that we made there on Amazon. So I do have eyes on it, uh, and maybe she'll walk back into the coffee shop, and maybe we can have, sit down for a conversation there. So but but yeah, no, uh, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still watching. I'm, I'm being patient. Uh, I, I do have a little bit of a short bias, if you guys didn't uh, already notice here. But uh, I'll try to stay as nimble as possible. But yeah, Amazon looking quite nice here. Um, and uh, some of the other names that I'm watching as well, nothing too crazy. We, we, the market is still holding up its, its highs here, right? So I do want to I do want to stay uh, respectful of that and uh, try to be as nimble as possible here. I'm short the SOC cell, which is the semiconductor one of the semiconductor ETFs, right? Uh, so uh, I do want to stay nimble on that. Looking for that Nvidia potentially to kind of uh, to catch a little bit of a breather, but uh, it is it is kind of popping back into that 900. So the question is, can that 900 serve as a little bit of a, a resistance? We just shot we just saw this crazy uh, uh, like a like like a wick, shake and bake, whatever you want to call it, that happened across the board here on uh, on the market. So not only it was just not an individual ticker, but you can see that it happened on uh, on both the ES and the NQ. So maybe some big boys uh, pushing some pushing some uh, pushing some shares around. It would seem. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I got to do my job and try to stay as nimble as possible. If Soxel is going to push towards some of these highs, I do want to stay nimble and maybe get some better prices for the short as well, right? So uh, as Soxel kind of pushes right back into that 47, we observed that 47 was quite strong earlier. Uh, let's see if we make a lower high underneath it. Let's see if the market kind of holds this. That wick to the low side, that, that rebid was quite aggressive. So maybe some continuation of that morning session bid that we had uh, very, very aggressive. So you, you can see how aggressive the, those initial candles were. We start to slow down. We take a little bit of a pullback. I'm asking where is VWAP on the NQs here? So let's take a quick look. 
um, right there on the end hues. Let's pull it up on a, yeah, it's already on a 15 minute, throw up the VWAP right there. So, okay, so we didn't get all the way down to VWAP, uh, it would seem, but we did get, uh, get kind of close there on that, uh, okay, so second candle, we didn't even break that low and then rips right back up. So let's see what we do in and around this area here, uh, just uh, consolidating, just orbiting around that 18.4 right now is the NQ. So I don't really see too much going on. Let me know if you guys uh, see anything anything going on, anything crazy, anything outlier that we can potentially look at, potentially uh, structure some trades off of. NVIDIA pushing into that 900. Let's see what, what we do with that 900 right now uh, as the market taking a little bit of a breather sideways, but maybe some action going on. I have no idea. Yeah, definitely. There, there, I think there's always, you know, some possibilities, but I'm also struggling to find them here. This has really, honestly, been a pretty bad trading week for me. I mean, probably don't have to say it. I think it's, you know, I've been I've been trading here live until, or not live, I'm still in the sim, but I mean, on on the, the How to Trade show live here on YouTube. And I think it, it's, it's been kind of clear that this has not really been my day. Uh, you know, trying to be a little bit like little orphan Annie and the sun will come out tomorrow and the sun keeps not coming out tomorrow. But that's, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to learn anything from being down in the dumps about it. I'm trying to learn and I'm trying to understand why trades are or aren't working. This Palantir, I, I, I'm pretty happy with just on a level of sticking to the plan and waiting for it to come in. This started to feel a little bit like Apple yesterday, which if you recall, I was in for half an hour and it moved a grand total of 10 cents or less in either direction. Um, it's starting to feel like a little bit like this. I have no reason to leave, much like with the Apple, but it's also a little bit hard to find the willpower to stay, much like the Apple trade. So that's just what I'm working on here. I'm trying to take a couple pennies on this as we get into that 82.83. But I do want to talk about the spy trade because I am not proud of myself on this. I do not think I handled this appropriately. Um, and let's talk about it. So initially, I think this short would have been also Powell stopped talking there. They're clapping for him now. So okay. um, they're, yeah, by the end, they're just kind of talking about careers and like, oh, like why people pick CEOs and stuff like that. So I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so here on the SPY, I initially did SPY some short opportunities and I should have been a lot scalpier about it. I should have just taken, I don't remember us seeing actually like getting to, to 520. This might have been a dark pull. I definitely saw 520 10s. I should have taken my 20 pennies and been pleased as a punch, but I wasn't. I was getting a little bit too ambitious, and I really shouldn't have been. I should have been like, Adara, you missed that pop down earlier, and that honestly might have been also why I was a little bit vengeful, because I was, I, I saw that, I look over, and I see that move down, and I'm about to punch, and then I stop myself, and then we drop 50 cents. So I do think this is probably a Scotia revenge trade. We had really small size, so we didn't lose too much here, but I'm just, it's the principle of the thing that upsets me. I got out part of it, then I got back in, I added back in, because I was like, you know, oh no, we could be dropping another couple pennies. It's like, Adara, don't do this. <laughs> so that you know what I mean. But but I, I am here. I do wanna. I don't wanna be too hard on myself about it. I wanna be here to just kind of talk about it and learn from it. As Cindy Lauper says, don't be discouraged. And you know the true colors on this trade are obviously not in the direction you want them to be. You would want my little purple triangles to be at the top, and the little green ones to be at the bottom, and they're not. But um, but you know, like I said, the sun will come out tomorrow. There always are more opportunities. As Obi often says here, where's the next trade? Yeah. So I'm trying to find it. I do think that Tesla is still, I think that's maybe my best name today, and I still think there are some opportunities there. If we keep riding this 90 MA, I'll take this bad boy long. I have no qualms. It also is, um, and you know, I mean, with, with these lines I drew, we kind of have some room to play, right? If we fall below, I take it short to 176. So, yes, yes, sorry, 167. 167 60s. If we go long, they take it to 168 40. So it gives you about 40 pennies of risk to reward either way. Right now, though, I'm sensing this could be a little bit of a long. So we're going to try to get involved here. Let's see if we are allowed into the Cybertruck. Powell says close the door, but hopefully <laughs> the Cybertruck says to open it. How are you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing all right there. Yeah. So pa I guess Powell's uh, Powell's finished. He's uh, he's off uh, off of uh, off the mic now. Uh, at uh, at uh, where was it? At uh, University Stanford Business Stanford? School. Okay, Stanford Business School. Um, so uh, he's done talking now. Some crazy action while he was talking or during going into the end of his talk right there. Uh, as the market makes an interesting move uh, as a, as he's kind of finished talking. So I don't know whether that was related to him talking or not. But uh, we saw. 
saw a move across the board uh, uh, on a lot of different names there, uh, including the including these futures. So uh, I'm still kind of patiently waiting, looking for looking for uh, more places. I guess a place to get some more Intel as well. If Intel is going to stay weak going into the close, I do want to find more places to get a little more aggressive there. Uh, again, a couple of missed opportunities on this this little uh, test here, a lower high. We're just looking at lower highs. Sure, you got VWAP as well, but that's just a line on the chart. It's just an indicator. The, the, the trade idea is, okay, well, if this is going to sell off off of that news that that players may think has, uh, has some sort of fundamental effect in the ticker um, and sellers are, are very, very, uh, I guess, in charge as we saw relative to the morning session there. They were very well in charge on the day. Did they stay in charge going into the close as well? Is this a bigger picture kind of move, not just an intraday move? So let's see if we can kind of ride on the backs of those uh, of, of said potential whales, right? Uh, that are reacting to, uh, to a potential fundamental change uh, forward looking on Intel's. Uh, I think they had some foundry numbers uh, they had some interesting stuff that uh, they talked about which they haven't talked about in the past before um, and uh, yeah it was a, it was definitely definitely some uh, some interesting news so I'm curious to know how that how that action will take place on the day and it is distinct it is quite distinct how Nvidia uh, sorry how uh, Intel is acting relative to other names in, in its sector like Nvidia like AMD and even when you compare it to the market to the NQ you know the NQ is heavily tech weighted right so um, it's just uh, again it's a learning experience that like every day is here uh, when we trade and I'm glad to have uh, to be spending it with you all as well, uh, kind of learning along the way. So let's see if there are any more opportunities for us. I will try to stay as, uh, as nimble as possible and just take what the what uh, mother market will give me on a day like today. But those longs off the open, oh boy, where, was, that, uh, was, that an, was that an awesome trade there? And then the reversion short as well on some of, the, some of these names coming in quite nice. But right now we are going a little sideways, chopping around, so I will stay. Uh, observant of that. Yeah, I mean, also speaking of observing, some this man just called the Disney meeting to order. And look at this background. This nice. is the Magic Kingdom castle. This is amazing. Like, literally, Disney killing it over here with this meeting. Um, do they have closed captions? They do. So here we go. This is perfect. So I put this link in the chat as well. I like putting the links. I'll put it in again in a couple of minutes. But um, right now, uh, they're talking about um, the company's accomplishments, apparently, and also some of the great things they're doing. I'm going to stop quoting this man. But yeah, he is starting to talk right now. Also, yes, I am long Tesla. I did get long at that 168. Drew saying he's also in calls here. Yeah, Drew, I hope for both of our sakes this one keeps moving up. I think we're holding that 168 really well, so I feel, feel pretty good about this. Darwin wants to know, where is the mouse? And honestly, good question. We'll have to find out. I guess, you know, it is the house of mouse. So we'll have to see if, um, if Brooklyn Beckham's father-in-law, Nelson Peltz, gets a key to Magic Kingdom and is part of the, the Mouse House castle there. Yeah, I saw, I saw Elon tweeted about that this morning, yeah, right? Elon did you see, also did you see that? He, 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 he said that uh, he feels, uh, feels better with, uh, with Peltz on the board on, uh, on Disney. Yeah. yeah, so uh, that, was a, that was an interesting look there. So a little support from, uh, from the EV man himself. Uh, oh, yeah, on the that, King. I, I still remember that uh, that Elon how uh, how he uh, how he talked how he kind of reacted to, uh, at that conference. Um, it was pretty epic. Um, he was just like, uh, "Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna threaten me with marketing, if you're gonna threaten me with money." And then he made some statements towards uh, what's his name, Bill? Oh, uh, to Bob Iger. To Bob, like, oh, to Bob, Bob Iger. Bob. Yeah, yeah. He was like, "Hi, Bob." Talking to you, buddy, and that was pretty. That was pretty badass, I think, um, of Elon. That was pretty funny as well. But uh, yeah, I guess he's he's got some opinions on on Disney, which is definitely interesting there. Oh yeah, yeah. He he's trying to exterminate the Mouse House. No, I'm joking. He's just a fan of. Um, I guess he's just a fan of Nelson Peltz there because we know he has some issues with Bob Iger, with regards to that advertising. Um, Horatio Gutierrez, Senior Executive Vice President, Chief Legal Compliance Officer of Disney, is now speaking. Um, right now, we can only see a little thumbnail of his face, which is kind of off-putting, but I assume he is there. I'll show you guys what I mean here. Um, also, the voting's happening. He's saying you can change your vote during the meeting. So this Ooh, is actually, it's going to okay. get really interesting. interesting. It feels like succession over here. I, well, I'm looking at Disney as well. I, pulled, I did pull it up here. Um, 
So we had we had some uh, some strong moves off of off of the open there, but pretty much sideways as of right now. But uh, like Adara just said, uh, the the meeting has just begun. So let's see. We've defined a little bit of a range on the day. Let's see what we do with uh, with said range here uh, on uh, on Disney there. So uh, we'll we'll continue to watch that one. Let's see if that one kind of comes in uh, one way or the other. But uh, yeah, we mentioned this yesterday. Got to be aware of when people who may uh, move around a ticker you will be you, you're involved in are speaking. Uh, you definitely want to uh, be a little astute and watch out for that, and maybe listen in as well. Uh, we kind of saw what what happened here. I don't know if that was that was uh, due to any Jay Powell uh, words, but uh, some some strong volatility, a little unnatural as well, uh, in 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 my opinion. But uh, again, limited experience on my part i have no idea but that's a that's a little bit of a distinct action across the board there while he's uh finishing up his talks so uh let's see where we where we go from here uh on uh, on some of these names but disney not really doing too much as of right now holding that 22 level uh so i'll, I'll stay patient vwap so we've we've made lower highs and now we're below vwap so that's something i do want to consider we did kind of crack a little bit of this 122 right now but we're trading in and around there as well so uh Stay patient, just waiting for that uh, next potential trade to show up here, uh, which reminds me, what is our friend Amazon up to? Uh, Amazon's still holding sideways uh, in, in the upper, uh, upper one-third, right? This is a crazy, crazy kind of move there. Uh, is it, okay, maybe not a full ATR. I think uh, Amazon's ATR last time I checked was in around 3.3, uh, 3 3.4, uh, and we did almost a full ATR there. Not really doing too much our vol today, so not, nothing crazy to be expected, I think, but uh, some strength kind of following in step. We talk about that beta, right? So in step with the market, Today, that beta on Amazon looking quite nice there. The beta on on Intel not as uh, not as in line uh, in terms of uh, in terms of comparing the volatility, especially in the morning session as well. So, yeah, that's a that's a nice look. And yeah, it's um yeah, there's a lot. Intel has been really moving distinctly for sure. It is dare I say distinctly different. Um, but yeah, no, I like I like too that you were saying like it's like its own kind of chip today, which yeah. it kind of has been when you really compare it to some of these other names. Um, but yeah, right right now Tesla doing a whole lot of nothing. We're hanging out at this 169 or 168 area. So if we were at 169, I'd be pleased as punch because we'd be a dollar in the money. Alas, we're at 168. Palantir, what are you doing? Oh, I think yeah, Palantir is is still. I have no reason to leave, so I'm staying in that. Also, Disney. I put up this chart. He did list all of the nominations, uh, the, pe the people the board is nominating, and then also he's like, yeah, we all know Trian's trying to get involved here. They're also nominated. So that'll be really interesting. Oh, there'll be up to three minutes of remarks from the try-in group. Okay. So when I hear those, oh, Nelson Peltz apparently speaking right now. So this is going to be, also, he doesn't even get a photo. It just says proponent, now speaking. <laughs> so, Damn. yeah, Disney is, that was pretty cool. We saw the nice little photo Horatio got, and now it's like Yeah, proponent what's going speaking. on there? Yeah, so he's, I'm going to keep you guys posted if there's anything interesting he's saying. Right now, though, Tesla deciding to get going in that Cybertruck. Hi, Bob, indeed. Um, but also, Disney's super rangy, speaking of Disney. So I actually think there might be some opportunities here. Although, do I want to get involved in this during this meeting? I'm not sure. I will short it, though, if we get into the... You know, we're actually going to put a resting order for this, like, this earlier kind of area. One, we'll do, like, 122, 11s. Why not? So it gives us about 10 pennies. I like this look because it's a kind of, it would be consult, uh, coinciding or confluencing, if you will, around that 90 MA area. B, it was that previous area of support. I like when support becomes resistance. I find it, there is that, that tendency for it to happen at times. So I want to be cognizant and I want to be aware. Please this punch with Tesla though. I have to say, if we get into 168, 38s, I will be very happy with this. Google is going, says Hog Rider. So I am guessing you are a Harley Davidson fan. And I've actually like, really thought about that name but yes it's a cool name there let's see how this is going i guess it's almost motorcycle weather too oh, but yeah, yeah this is this is nice Definitely. look have That's you ever coming. ridden a motorcycle i have one yeah yeah oh yeah. you have one yeah 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 I, it's uh it, i can't wait to kind of pull it out um but Har harleys are great but I, I like uh, I like the crotch rockets myself. I have a I have a, uh, a Ninja 600, which is pretty cool. It, I have the fastest color as well. If you guys know, the fastest color is red. Adds a few horsepower. Heard it here. 
not really? first, but I'm joking. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's 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 almost writing season. I'm waiting for that weather to kind of come in. Uh, but uh, it's pretty much uh, it's pretty much a chop right now with uh, with Mother Nature. We've we've had some cool, we've had some warm days. We've had some some uh, days in the double digits as well. But then raining and cold kind of fluctuating in between. So I don't necessarily want to take it out uh, right now. It's uh, I st I store it in the garage for the for the winter, kind of winterize it, and uh, just sits there for for a few months. That's 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 a little unfortunate thing about uh, about living uh, living in a in a place where you get all four seasons uh, of, you have to pay the full year for insurance and then you only get to ride at most if you have warm uh, warm riding uh, a riding kit uh, you, at most maybe you're riding for like six months if you're really kind of pushing it there but uh, yeah no I'm waiting for those warm uh, warm weathers for the tar for the for the tarmac to kind of uh, you know heat up for that nice little grip, and then yeah, we can go for some for some rides there. But yeah, I love I love riding. I would really definitely awesome. recommend if you if you've never rode a motorcycle before, it is a life changing experience. Uh, just you know, just that that, that it, it's a sense of freedom, I think, in in, in a way as well. So I love uh, riding. Uh, motorcycles and yeah, John. John saying red Hayabusa. Yeah, I don't know about the I, I don't know about the Hayabusa. Uh, top Voip, can you pop a wheelie? Let me tell you a story about uh, the first time I did pop a wheelie. It was totally unintentional. So I was switching over from a 250 cc bike to a 600 bike. So uh, almost double the power in okay. terms of in terms of engine. And uh, uh, so I, I bought I bought it off of a guy in uh, in London, and uh, he was like he was like go go for a ride. So I, I had only rode. 250s at, at that point, so a much smaller bike, a, kind of a beginner uh, learning kind of bike, and uh, he was like, there, "There's a there's a road at the back. It just it follows along the along the railway, and nobody's really there. It's it's just like a it's just a just a road. It's a service road, right?" He's like, "You can go up and down, see how it is there. It's about uh, 500 meters worth of uh, worth of length." And I was like, "Okay, cool." So I took it for a test drive, and uh, how I popped that wheelie. The t the smaller bikes are a lot more forgiving. Oh. When if you make like mistakes or if you kind of if you're aggressive with it, they're really forgiving. Like you won't it won't do anything crazy. But on the 600, the first time I switched from first to second gear, I kind of dropped the clutch while having the throttle on, like I would normally ride my 250, which is a lot more forgiving. And then all of a sudden, the front the front wheel is about about a foot and a half in the air, and I'm like, oh boy, here we go! Oh <laughs> what's oh ha what's happening now? Oh and I'm just like, all right, just ease off the throttle, and we're just land back down. This is a very beautiful, powerful bike, and I do have to respect it. But uh, yeah, no, I love uh, I love kind of uh, riding. If you guys if you guys didn't catch uh, catch the uh, the, the gist there. That's awesome. And I love to, you know, just like Mother Market, Mother Nature can also kind of chop and turn a little bit. So I yep. like that analogy. Also, yeah, this Google also uh, riding a motorcycle to the upside there. So shout out to Hog Rider, which is how we went down this whole um, fabulous little rabbit hole. I love That's very cool. I had no idea you were a motorcycle rider. But so we have these bounces off VWAP here, continuing to make higher highs, higher lows. Oh boy. Very nice look there. I had, I mean, you know, we just did the oh boy there. So I, I, I had to. We also got to our Disney. So I oh, have the house mouse. Also, Nelson Peltz went over his three minutes. And then they were like, Nelson Peltz, you have to stop talking when we had three minutes. Then he continued to talk a bit and said, thank you for your uninterrupted time, which felt a little shady. Yeah. But yeah, so those are Damn. some of the updates there from the meeting. Right now, Horatio continuing to go over everything again, the next item of agenda. Blackwells, which is also, I think, vying for some seats, they declined to come. So Nelson made his thoughts known, but Blackwells not speaking. So this could get really spicy here which is why I'm interested in this Disney short. Happy to take it. Pleased as dang punch over here in this trade. We're going to be trying to get out at the bottom of this. We're, we're, not, we're not too ambitious here. Uh, that sounds bad, but I just, for my style of trading, I would rather not save a piece for the dream. I just want to be taking these ranges as they come. Tesla getting towards that 168.40 area, which would make me really happy there as well. Um, let's see how we do here. Shout out to, I believe it was um, Drew in the chat saying he's also in this in puts here, so nice look. Also, Darwin was saying that, um, you know, it's not a show if you guys don't look at Adobe. Oh, that's, so, yeah. That's true, I mean. That is very our, true. Our namesake, no, I'm joking. But um, the pun that started it all, if you will. But no, Adobe, kind of, kind of interesting here, a little bit uh, compressed, right? So we had these the, the top, the, not significantly lower highs, but slightly, we have this pop here, 498, 40. Then we get to 498, then we get to 497, 80. So about 20 cent incremental dips in these pops. 
bottoms though significantly higher lows. So we have this pre, oh, this is not even pre-market, this is 9.45 in the morning, so this is right after open. 9.40, 4.90, then we get to 4.96, then we get to 4.96.20. So we're seeing a little bit of a compression here. We're about 0.5% on the day. Was there any news on Adobe? Let's see what kind of news we have. No news. Oh, apparently this is cool. OpenAI posting on X that you can now edit Dolly images in ChatGPT across the web, iOS and Android. So I guess uh, that could be some negative catalyst for Adobe, right? So now you, you can use their Dolly for image editing. But I mean, Adobe is a really cool platform. I was in uh, the program I was in in school. We did a little bit of dabbling in Adobe. And there's a lot of really cool platforms. So I do think if you're doing animations and that type of thing, Adobe definitely has some stuff for you. This stock, though, has kind of been having a little bit of a struggle. We had a pseudo double top 635. Now we're seeing lower highs and lower lows. So bit of a rough look here for, for that Adobe, but not for this Adobe. We're doing fine, right as rain over here on this desk. And it's literally raining too. So yeah. how, how are you doing? Um, it's, uh, it, again, just kind of observing some of the, some of these positions there. Um, a little, uh, little uh, uh, I guess, uh, um, not really concerned, but kind of uh, really watching that uh, that socks uh, sock sell as it kind of holds this this action there. It, it's kind of holding and consolidating in and around this action that selling that came in. Like oh boy, did I did I not uh, uh, did I make a mistake? Um, <laughs> did I make a mistake? Not really covering too much there. As again, I got to take what the what, what the market will give me, and if the market kind of slams right into a previous support level uh, above VWAP and holds, then I should be taking taking some off. Uh, that aggressive action, right? And then we get that instant reversion there. Now we're just chopping up here. So let's see if some of those sellers can come back in uh, and maybe uh, maybe that move comes into fruition there. But I'm watching the ES and the NQ as well, making lower uh, lower lows there. You can see on the 15 minute, even though you had that, uh, that, uh, that wick dance right there on, uh, what candle is this? That's the 1130, so that's the 1230 candle right there. Um, so the 1230 candle, a little bit of a strong wick on the 15 minute, but look at those highs after, uh, on the consecutive candles after that, uh, lower and lower. So we are technically making lower highs after this strength in, in, in the morning. So the question becomes, are we gonna hold this bit on top of 18.4? Uh, or are we gonna take a little bit uh, more of a breather back down to the downside there? But uh, yeah, talking about Adobe, uh, Adobe, I, did, I kinda did pull it up uh, last night. It was a little interesting to me what it did. Um, uh, yesterday, it was a bit of a V-shape. Right, so V shape, kind of a kind of a push uh, off of the pre market though. So uh, a lot of the, the right side of the V volume coming in off of the open, but uh, uh, very lackluster volume making the left side of the move as it uh, when it did the flush. So I was like, okay, well if we come in today and maybe look at that 500, so that 500 confluence as well. 500 has been a bit of an area you can see uh, support, support, support. Yesterday it was a resistance, and then today we're just chopping around underneath that 500. So maybe are we poised for a little bit of continuation? You can see that post earnings we've been consolidating, uh, pretty much uh, building into this uh, into this as Sharif would likes to say a flat bottom here, uh, as with lower highs also. So let's see if we can break some of these earnings day one lows at that 485, or do we? There it is, flat bottom break potential on that Adobe uh, off of that earnings reaction as well. So earnings day one low, quite uh, quite interesting there. So and interaction with that 500 at the same time. So Intel catching a bit of a bid back into that 41. Let's see how far it can get. Uh, let's see if those VWAP sellers kind of continue uh, continue the move on the day there. I'm still watching Sock sell. TSM still holding. Arm, Arm is a, I, Arm was pretty nice off of the open, I guess. I missed that one. Um, 123 holds quite nicely and then an aggressive uh, rip to the upside. So here's, here's a bit of a bid happening on Intel. You can see we got that wave of, uh, of light green where people are punching into the ask or above the ask there uh, with the light greens. And then, uh, yeah, the dark greens are uh, people punching into the bid. So prints below the, the current level one bid there happening excuse me, across the board, but this Sox L position, pretty much flat on it. So I'm still kind of holding on, just waiting and seeing, being observant. If the market's gonna slowly kind of bleed off, I've already got my shots in, I'm gonna let it bleed and uh, see how it, see how it kind of, yeah, we, we talk about kind of, you gotta be, you gotta think like a hunter, right? Yeah. So I like to kind of remind myself and use those, use those, uh, how you say, like, uh, um, Hunting terms? Yeah. Is euphemism, is that the right you, word? 
You feel like you've... I, 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 is that the right word? Is that the word I'm looking for? I, I don't, don't know. know if it's the word you're looking for, but it's okay. a good word. Okay. Okay. No, it's a great word, but I, I wasn't sure if that's Analogy? the word. Analogies. Analogies. Yeah, I guess analogies, but like There's words and words sayings yeah. that, that I say to myself to kind of remind the, the mindset and the mental I got to be in while trading. And, and as you guys know, uh, I say a lot of things, but uh, again... I am saying them so that I can reinforce those things back into my habits. I say those out loud, I say them out here, I say them back at my desk. I'm pretty much doing the same thing as I would uh, back there here, roughly, a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more with, uh, with talking a lot more and uh, a little bit more distractions as well. But happy to do it with you guys and happy to learn along the way alongside a great community. What do you got going on with Tesla? Are you still short Tesla? Okay. I'm long, yeah, I'm long Tesla, yeah. Okay, I, long I, Tesla, okay. Yeah, I, I've been long Tesla. I I was initially trying to gun for 168.40, but I'm getting impatient, and Tesla is not the, um, I was promised a Roadster 0 to 100, and it gave me a little bit more of, you know, a Model 3 that needs a charge. No, I'm joking. I was not promised anything. Stocks promise you nothing. What I mean, though, is we're, we're not really having that mm, that movement I really wanted up into 168.40s. So I'm going to take 168.20s. We are having lower highs here. We're a little bit more stagnant. So that's what I'm going for. Also, uh, Varsha was asking why short Disney at, at that level. And I want to talk about it because I, I have a reason. I also have Disney in my ear right now. I mean, not Disney themselves, but the shareholder meeting. So I am aware if there's anything happening. Honestly, right now, though, it's a lot of uh, people kind of talking about, you know, like certain, you, you know, the whole how, how these votes go, like certain agendas and certain proxy votes of a political nature. So that's kind of what's happening right now. There's nothing super company related yet. The most relevant was when Nelson Peltz took the mic and then did not want to give the mic back because he still had things to say. So that was really the most relevant thing that's happened. That was a while ago, though. I really, as long as we keep making these lower highs and cool staying in this, once we start to break above uh, this 24 area, so we've got about... 10 pennies to do that, and I'm giving myself about 13 pennies of risk, then that's what I'm going to have to say bye-bye to, to Disney, and I'm going to have to... I guess I'm going to say that's all, folks, to Disney, although that hey. is a Looney Tunes reference, so it's not really on brand. But I, I'm going to give this a little while and see what happens. I do think there's a range trade here. I don't think my point of entry was perfect. I should have probably waited a little bit longer, but I, I do like this look for now. We're going to have to see it when it happens. Eddie R. saying, I want to bring down the mouse house. I, I mean, I, I, well, well, I'm cool with taking it like 20 pennies. I'll put it that way. <laughs> also, I had to read out this very funny comment from um, Hold My Beer. I can't find the exact... Oh, yeah, here it is. Saying, Adara, there was news. There was a merger. Get it? Adara and Obi. So I thought that was pretty funny there with Adobe. Okay. Um, I, I, had, I had to shout that out. So there yeah, we go. Yeah, I wonder what, the, what, the, what, the, uh, what that price is, what the... With the merger uh, or the buyout prices on on, yeah. on that, that'd be interesting. Maybe yeah, that five hundred. Who knows? We're interacting with that five hundred, uh, interestingly, over the past past few days here. Um, so uh, yeah, I guess uh, I'm just uh, still looking at uh, looking at these positions. Sock sell, catching a little bit of a uh, little bit of a bid, um, but uh, market's still kind of holding holding within within its uh, this range we've been doing for for a little bit here. So I do have. Uh, Intel here. So let's take a look at some of these tickers that have been doing some volume on the day. Intel being the third top ticker on the day. So definitely interesting. Let's see if we can come back into that VWAP there for a potential push uh, as well. So, uh, okay, so Soxel is catching a little bit of a bid. So I'm going to stay a little bit nimble, like I said I would. So uh, I'm just going to get out of that one and then reassess a little bit later on, uh, on that one. So it is, it is kind of pushing back up. So it was quite distinct. We rebid that, uh, that quadunk that just happened uh, uh, off, of, off of Powell talking. So maybe that 47 might be a little nicer there. Let's see if we can make it to that 47. I will get involved once again, but I did punch out when it did get into the 90s there. So uh, original stop was kind of higher. I'm like, if it's going to do this, I'm not going let it, to let it kind of go all the way there. If it wants the if it wants the 47, I'll I'll, uh, I'll leave it for that 47 to maybe reassess and come back into it. But yeah, Intel may be coming back up into the 41. So that kind of caters to the long idea, right? So uh, I don't want to be short, especially on Soxel, but I like my price on Intel, so we'll stay into that one there. Like I said, covered most of it at that uh, uh, 4080s, 4090s, and some change uh, much much earlier in the day here. And as we approach. The uh, uh, just a what an hour, uh, thirty minutes roughly from that uh, from that closing session time, two p.m. to to four. The, the last couple of hours, uh, if we're gonna just chop around and maybe just continue that morning move, 
then I don't want to really stand in the way of that. But if it's going to flush back in and maybe sell off into VWAP, I'm more than willing to get involved once again. But uh, yeah, it might have been too aggressive on, on the day with this SOC sell. You can see that it, it was distinctly different from that Intel. So I was kind of pushing that similar bias on both SOC sell and Intel. And you can see how uh, I was quite aggressive in the morning session as I kept on shorting, get stopped out, short, stop out, short, stop out. And then uh, I guess now again, um, didn't really hit my stop, but I'm choosing to stop out just based off of the information that I'm getting here on that. Whether, whether I'm right or wrong, I have no idea, but I, like I said, I do want to stay a little nimble and uh, just observe and react to some of this price action here. So Intel kind of coming into these highs there. So let's see if that if, if VWAP sellers stay involved. ABIO, don't really know what's going on with this one here, but I know it's a, it's a biotech. It is a repeat offender, and uh, yeah, so uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a name that's been moving around, I guess. Nothing too crazy, a bit sideways, so if you had the morning pop off of uh, what looks like to be an interesting level here that might have uh, shown itself in the pre-market, 290s, 280s, uh, that seems like it was a nice drive off of, uh, off of the open there. On, uh, on ABIO. So Tesla as well. We know that uh, Adara was just involved in Tesla. That 169 uh, almost coming in, 168.80s is the high right now on Tesla. Let's see if it kind of comes in for a little bit of a pullback or do we get uh, more of the same and kind of continue this move to the upside there on Tesla? So next name here, VNDA, another another biotech, another pharmaceutical company. So I guess this one had some news as well. Let's see what it had. Up on FDA, nod for uh, fa Fanapt in, uh, okay, so bipolar one disorder. Okay, so cool. So they got an FDA nod, FDA approval on, on something. Uh, on one of their drugs and it caught a nice little bid off of the open there. Look at those pre-market high breaks, maybe a reclaim as well. Again, in retrospect, I'm just speaking as to what has happened on the ticker this morning. Uh, VVPR, I know uh, a few traders were on this name yesterday, a little bit of a continuation happening today. Uh, take a look at that nice ride of VWAP in the pre-market there. So a nice stair step, bang, bang, bang. So maybe some swing shorts, a little bit underwater coming into today. It is a small cap, uh, a small cap. Um, let's see specifically how, uh, how many caps it has to be that small. Um, let's see. So 22 million. So a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, small cap there uh, in uh, in my with my definition and uh, catching a little bit of a squeeze in the pre-market. Take a look at that interesting R vol happening right before uh, that pushes up into that level there. So an expanding volume going into the open as well. Bit of a bit of a give there and then uh, kind of a flush off of the open. Can't really make it past 10. So that's definitely interesting. Not really watching it, not really trading it, but that short, oh boy, was that kind of a beautiful short there off of that 10. Tilray, we talked about some of those names uh, earlier today that uh, I think we looked at uh, Cron, I forget who it was. Somebody mentioned Cron in the chat and we took it, we took a look at MSOS as well. So uh, some volume happening on some of these, uh, some of these cannabis names as well. Ford, name I don't normally look at also on this list. So it's about as far as I'm gonna go there. Kind of the top, uh, top few names there. AMD, of course, kind of uh, we're watching that one as well. Holding VWAP quite well. And this kind of range, take a look at that range that happened. That's a little distinct. And then on that flush, we hold the, the high of that range and we're pushing back up towards potential highs. So I, remember, I forget who it was in the chat, but they were saying that 182 might've had a seller. So I didn't really see, I, I wasn't really there to observe that kind of action there. But uh, yeah, let's see if it can get back up to 182s. If said seller that uh, you guys pointed out in the chat maybe reappears there at that price. So I uh, don't really got too much. Oh, Disney, damn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we, we had this massive move down in Disney and this was Beautiful, actually, you were short. Yeah, I was short. I took my, my nice. 20 pennies and then it dropped even lower, but damn. I'm not here to complain. Here yeah, you this go. Was, this was a sell to a good news situation. The stream is still happening, but right now it's a, a pretty long glorified Disney ad. Uh, you could just see they had the Zootopia damn. people on there as mascots. So they said, they literally said that concludes the business portion of the meeting. I still have the video up with subtitles, but I'm not listening to it right now because um, you know lots of sounds uh, right now it's literally just music and an ad but basically um, yeah so what happened was the for the board decided to keep all of the current numbers. This was actually positive catalyst for people you think who were invested in Disney, but massive sell-off here 
on this name. Oh so I, I was really happy I ended up getting short this and ended up being a sell the news event. So please, this podcast, I should have probably kept a piece for a dream. That was probably where I made a bit it's of going. a mistake. It's going. Disney is going right now. Yeah, I mean, you, you learn a little you bit from what? your trade, right? And this trade, completely falling to the downside. Okay. There were some great puns in the chat here in this, including buy Bob, a couple people saying instead of hi, Bob. And then also, um, Bears versus Bulls. I was saying the stream froze because it did. I couldn't even hear the announcement because the stream froze as they were saying the results of the vote. Ah. And then Bears versus Bulls. Maybe that frozen, order flow. Which was perfect. Pardon? <laughs> Maybe that order flow cl uh, clogging up those lines there Something, on the Yeah, cell. literally the stream. But yeah, so it's been... <laughs> It's certainly been a crazy situation here on Disney. I said, you know, you don't want to be Mulan Disney right now. Bad Mulan pun there. But, but yeah, this is, this is certainly a, a rough look. I mean, talk about falling off the bottom of this range. We fell with a viciousness, swiftness, whatever word you want to use. This is quite a bad look here. So, um, yeah, so let's see what happens. Oh, boy. Joe look Schmo, at that. Um, I, I haven't wow. traded meta today, so I don't try to look at this. Yeah, I mean, maybe in the past I did something... Weird with meta, je ne sais pas. But yeah, I haven't, I haven't really traded uh, meta today. I like we're curling back off of meta. There could be some range opportunities. So we're going to have to see what to do here. Uh, Tesla, though, I'm happy I got it where I did because Tesla never broke above that 140, 68.40. I know I don't have patience. And I'm trying to work on that. But sometimes the looking at the tape, the book, the scalpulating, if you will, and getting out early does kind of, um, does kind of pay off here. Yeah, Disney I have an eye on. We're trying to pop back up here in Disney, but... Who knows? Um, also, there were some remarks released by Nelson Peltz. So let me um, get to those. They're not Nelson Peltz, but Trianne in general saying, and I'm going to pull these up here. Um, well, we are disappointed with the outcome of this proxy contest. Trianne greatly appreciates all of the support and dialogue we have had with Disney stakeholders. So there we go. That, that's Disney's take there. Um, but yeah, so there we go on, on DIS. Disney getting dissed, I guess, by by short sellers right now. That is for darn sure. I am short on the spy, Roberto. I'm really trying to, to short these pops here because I've had some luck shorting. The, not I don't want to use the word luck because I've been trying to be careful and it has not been perfect. I did make some mistakes on this earlier, but I've really just been trying to short these pops in the spy and just taking it like 10 pennies. We just had a nice little short there. If we break really out of this into the, we're giving it about 10 pennies each direction. So I'm trying to take advantage of these little opportunities to short the pops. We're more or less like, where did I get involved in this? Yeah, we're basically flat on this right now. So please just punch with that. I want to take this to the bottom here of these candles, 52s. I'm not sure if we're going to get that because we are holding on pretty well here. Really what I should be doing instead, we're curling back up. I should be going long at the bottom of this. So next time as I get out, I'm going to flip to the long because you, you have to learn. Uh, we're talking about here how to trade. And I mean, what are we doing if we're not learning a little bit every day, right? So that, that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, Chris J saying Disney to 99 gap fill. I want to look at the daily on that because I think that would be a really steep drop for Disney. Where right now we just broke below I'm trying to play 121s. The Pardon? So I'm looking for the bounce. We're looking yeah. at 99s. Okay, all right, all right. I'll, I'll be I'll be a little more patient. Yeah, let's see what happens. I mean, there's so there's so many opportunities. Let's see. Um, also, yeah, shout out to as I my chart just collapsed there. Sorry. But a shout out to Alan Smith as I pulled this up. Please hit the like button. It is important to us all. I mean, yeah, I love that, uh, Alan Smith. Yeah, everybody, please hit the like. We really appreciate it. Always happy to be here and take these markets to you guys every day. Let's see that 99 gap fill. Um, oh, okay. So I guess like a right. Yeah, I mean, I think that would be, that'd be quite... That'd be quite the, the fill. I think right now, especially with that oh rounded bottom, God. Disney's been looking bullish for quite some time. We just dropped another like 50 pennies here on DIS. This is it's the hard chart to look at. I will say though, right now, not the spy is falling, the sky is falling, but the spy is falling. So shout out to Chicken Damn. Little, who I believe is also a Disney movie once. Disney also falling yeah. here too. How are you doing? Uh, I, am, uh, I am a little bit in awe. Of, uh, of, that, uh, of that Disney. So I tried to take a quick bounce. I was like, all right, well, if we're going to hold the 21 and kind of kind of hold right away after we slam back into it, I'll try a cheeky little long. Doesn't really happen. Doesn't really work. Get stopped out right away. And then it just slams into 120 halves. So I'm like, all right, well, glad I got out of that one underneath 121. And uh, yeah, I'll stay, I'll stay a little patient. Um, uh, again, this is kind of similar to that. Uh, we, we talk about having, having uh, kind of stops in or like when people are talking, some volatility that can happen on a name. We just talked about this yesterday and take a look at today. Prime example, Disney's having an event. They have speakers. Uh, things, things might be changing around on their board and uh, people are voting for, 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 said, uh, for said changes as well. And uh, yeah, interesting stuff can happen 
to the ticker when uh, when those when those things are kind of going on at the same time. So uh, you can see that slam 122 and some change right into 121s, and then now we're kind of slowing down a little bit here. So let's see if we can get a little bit more of this action here on Disney. I love it when that intraday float potentially gets offside and uh, sets up. I think intraday catalyst is definitely in my playbook, uh, but I got to be a little bit more patient. Uh, again, this is not necessarily like a uh, it's not the same kind of intraday catalyst as like Apple may have uh, releasing like some AI news, right? This is like an investor meeting kind of uh, a, a meeting where they have a, a vote and people are speaking on uh, Disney's behalf, and maybe investors will uh, have some strong opinions, and they're gonna they're gonna exercise those opinions with with their with their pocket with their wallets here on Disney the ticker itself. So let's see how much uh, opportunity this uh, this ticker has uh, left for us. Yeah, but, I think this, yeah, we yeah, shall, sorry, we shall see. Sorry. Yeah, this, this tape keeps on distracting me. I'm just like, I, I keep looking at it over and over again. I'm like, damn, like that's some good action there. I do want to stay uh, vigilant for anything, uh, anything outlier that may or may not show up here on the Disney tape. 120 is coming in. And before I even do that, let's take a quick look left together uh, as Disney does a little bit of a dance here on top of that 121 here. So let's start off with the, with the weekly, one week. All right, so let's blow this up a little bit here. So if it does catch a bounce off of that 121, I do want to be involved. So I'm watching that a little close. But uh, again, I have no idea whether that, how well that will work. Um, I still need more information, I guess. So we did get a little bit of a quadunk, but take a look at the weekly. We're well within trend. We're, we are well within, um, uh, well within the range there. So you can see even with that strong flush that we're getting on the daily here, uh, we still didn't break yesterday's low. We still we still haven't uh, broken uh, the day the weekly low as well. We've been bidding up. We gapped up on earnings. We made a nice little base 108. If you're talking about that 99 gap fill, if that's what you're talking about, maybe maybe we are poised for a little bit of a pullback, and maybe this uh, this uh, this meeting today is that is that catalyst is maybe that sell on the sell on the news event. Maybe, but post earnings, we've, we've had some strong action. We made a base, broke out of that base. The range uh, kind of started to trend after that breakout there. Maybe a little bit of another bus stop here happening at, after this uh, 123, 124 test on Disney. But uh, yeah, let's, let's stay a little patient there. Uh, I'm curious to know what we do with some of these levels. So why do I like that 121? Right here, it slams right into this, this consolidation from yesterday uh, where we caught a strong bid. So maybe there is some something or someone potentially at that price as, as price slams into it and suddenly kind of uh, stops in its tracks in and around that 121. So if we can consolidate a little bit more, uh, maybe I'll get involved. But if we kind of uh, stay weak off of this and maybe we get that market tailwind as well going into the close, Let's see what Disney does uh, in and around some of these uh, some of these prices that we have going on here. One twenty one. Yeah, I mean one twenty one. Can you do something for me? We'll we'll find out. We'll definitely find out there if it does its thing. One twenty one. Also, I did get long spy. I said I want to play a range. Why the heck am I not playing the range? So I'm playing this range. I know it's a little bit different with ETFs, but I have been watching the price action we have at these levels. We fell a little bit into fifties. I was getting a little bit on the edge of my seat, and then we bounced right back up. I'm taking this to like mid 60s, so we're giving this about 10 pennies each way. I have enough size that I can scalp this a little, a little bit comfortably. It's not like you know an, a horribly large position, but it's nice. It's like you know Goldilocks, like oh this bear, this bed's too hard, this bed's too soft, this one's just right. I would say I feel that about the position size right now. In a bit of a roundabout analogy, as I am want to do, but let's see what we do here on the spy. Also, yeah, so so Joe Schmo saying that uh, he meant that because I, I went long the Meta Connect event and it went horribly against me, but then I went short the Disney event and it ended up working out. So nice. shout out to you, Joe Schmo. Yeah, very happy we did not have a Meta Connect type situation here today on, on DIS because that would have been a little, bit a little rough indeed. But I had the same thing happen as well. Let's look at PayPal. Uh, I know there was that, that PayPal event was a massive, there was massive buy in PayPal up to the event. Then I went short PayPal um, right before the event, not because of the catalyst, but because I saw levels I liked. Then I get out because I, my stop was probably too conservative. It was like 20 pennies on PayPal. And then we, we break up a little bit higher. Then we flush like four bucks. 
So you know what I mean? That was another example of just not timing things right and events not going how you want them to. So happy I got a little bit of avenge trading here, not revenge, avenge trading on Disney. PayPal actually, though, not a bad look. I, I know I mostly pulled this up kind of arbitrarily uh, with regards to that mention there of, of events, but this is nice. We bounced off VWAP a couple times. It's kind of rangy earlier. Now we're making these higher highs. We are bouncing nicely off that 9 EMA, about 0.73% of the day. Is there any news on PayPal? Because I know um, Needham was going around giving analyst updates on some of these finance-related stocks. Nothing on PayPal, though I know they did. They were chatting about Affirm and SoFi. They said SoFi is their favorite of the digital payment stocks uh, because they said SoFi, like, longer term, has the best opportunities, and they have a digital... Uh, they have a banking license, which they said set it apart. So that was some interesting analyst notes you can get there on SoFi. Um, oh, so they, they said they initiated coverage on Affirm with a hold rating. So this was not a super bullish rating on Affirm here. Um, they did not affirm the bulls, I guess, with this hold rating. But yeah, affirm, a bit of a double top here, slightly lower lows. A lot of these, these charts today are pretty range-bound, actually, when you look at it. It's pretty within the range, unless you're looking at Disney, in which case uh, the mouse house kind of fell came crumbling down there a little bit. But yeah, a lot, of, a lot of really rangy charts we have in the day. 20 minutes left here on this day. Yeah, ra range bound indeed. Again, after that, after that action in the morning, that very strong bid up, we've only been kind of consolidating, kind of chopped sideways since then. And the stronger sell that uh, was around, what, 11.45-ish, so going into noon. Um, so yeah, we've been kind of sideways as well. Intel, nice little slow and steady uh, churn to the downside. Again, Intel distinctly different. Uh, maybe a fundamental catalyst happening on Intel, acting very, very differently differently than the rest of the chip sector there. So uh, uh, that's definitely definitely an interesting look. I definitely have to have a lot more there on, on a ticker that is working for me. Um, but uh, it is what it is. On to the next trade, which is potentially going to be Disney here. Uh, what can Disney do with this 121? That's what I'm asking right now. No real size showing up there. But uh, 121 reserving on the ask as of right now. Just a tiny little reserve. Let's see how much uh, there is actually there um, if we're going to... If we're gonna kind of push back through. Uh, that level obviously has to kind of break there. Um, I don't necessarily want to take a risk all the way down to 40s here, about a 60 penny risk. Um, on uh, on Disney to the to the lows there and uh, giving it I think giving it anywhere in between is really not doing the move any sort of justice. So the question I'm asking myself is like, am I willing to give it 60 pennies of risk in this position here uh, and obviously size accordingly, or do I kind of wait? I, I was watching this little dip down to 60s. That was absolutely nice. But uh, if it can give me an opportunity to risk a little bit tighter, a little bit higher, I do want to stay. Uh, I still do want to get involved and stay involved here on Disney, but. Uh, looking like a little bit of a pullback here happening. Let's see if Intel can make some fresh lows. I did kind of re-up there on uh, underneath that for, uh, underneath that 41. Got some more inventory uh, for the push to the downside. Let's see if that'll come into fruition. 4060s uh, is the low of day on Intel. We saw some we saw some interesting action in the morning. Some interesting size happening for, for uh, 4108s, uh, 4088s as well. Buddy was there a few times, kind of holding a reserve, uh, holding some size there and uh, holding the bid pretty much when it uh, as it pops back into VWAP and kind of washes players out and uh, coming right back into 4060s with about an hour and uh, I guess uh, two, two hours and 20 minutes left uh, roughly till the closing bell here. So let's see what that end of day session has in store here for Intel. Is it going to continue doing more of the same or do we get a little bit of a distinct difference going into the going into the close? I have no idea. But something that has been quite strong and I guess distinctly different in its own way relative to the other chip names Adara has been SMCI. Now SMCI, I, I, I wish I had uh, had a had the risk to trade this one here. Um, definitely, oh definitely a name that's uh, that's worth watching today. Look at this, 1,000. 1,000 seems to be an interesting place to interact with over and over again uh, over the past few weeks. There, sure, it does it does a little bit of a wash, uh, maybe 10, 15 points around that 1,000. But again, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a thousand dollar ticker. Like you can look for you can look for that uh, that uh, uh, one percent kind of uh, pop up and down there with that 10 point kind of uh, uh, churn or or um, 
chop is the right word I'm looking for, but look at that aggressive action, continuing the bid back to the upside. So SMCI, a little distinctly different in, in the opposite way relative to Intel there. And uh, I guess a little different than some of the other semiconductors as well, where uh, a lot of them look a lot like the market where they've had their strong move in the morning session and then just chopping sideways uh, for the rest of the day here for, for whatever uh, for the rest of the day until now 140 as of right now we've just been chopping sideways on a lot of these uh, a lot of these chip names but SMCI making fresh highs as we speak to the upside so that's definitely an interesting look there but uh, yeah I, I I wouldn't feel too comfortable trading it if I didn't have uh, I, I want to be able to risk at least 10 to 15 points on that on that name uh, given what it does I think the spread itself sometimes can be that much uh, when it when things get a little spicy so uh, I will keep it on watch I do have it in consideration there but the rest of the chips maybe just uh, doing more of the same just chopping sideways sure we're printing a little bit of red but that red is well within inside uh, uh, inside of uh, this strong chop that we got with Powell stepping off of the mic. So 121 catching a little bit of a sell here on the Disney. Uh, let's see where we go from here. Maybe we, do we make some fresh lows or maybe it's coming down to give me that, give me a better price so that I can risk to the lows here down in the 40s. So let's see what Disney will have in store for us going into the close. Yeah, we'll have to see if, what we're going to do there um, on that DIS because that's certainly been an interesting one. Also, you know, what, what's your favorite credit chip? We were talking about um, Pringles weirdly earlier today. Um, with these chip names, do you have a favorite type of chip, Obi? Um, I think the first one that kind of uh, pops right up is uh, all dressed ruffles. I like those. Those are nice. Um, uh, I like uh, uh, ketchup chips as well, like the Lay's ketchup chips, classic, uh, uh, classic uh, uh, snack from uh, from the childhood. But uh, again, it's been a while since I've had those, and th those can be trouble um, because you eat too many of those. Uh, you get a little, uh, you get a little acidic there with uh, with that. But uh, uh, did did hot Cheetos count? They As chips? I, sure, we're we'll gonna count. Okay, hot if, if if hot Cheetos count, bar none, hot Cheetos is my favorite kind of chip. Yeah, I like, that. I like hot Cheetos. Yes, Sean and is also, agreeing with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hot Cheetos. Yeah, I, I've, I've had. I've, there's been times. Fingers, yeah, they get all on your fingers, which is like you know that's. I guess that's part of it. But like, yeah, can't no. You can't be doing too much gaming while uh, while eating eating those. Not that not that we do too much of it, but <laughs> yeah, or trade. I mean, similar similar things, ranked. But um, uh, yeah, SMCI is uh, is pushing quite uh, quite aggressively to the upside there, and uh, Disney coming coming back down. So let's see what the futures have in store. Eighteen four. But yeah, chips. Favorite chip, I would say hot Cheetos. I like that. Th yeah, thank yeah, you yeah. for humoring my my. Uh, How about yours? My question. Okay, I like if we're if we're going Cheetos, I like the white Cheetos. Okay. I like the crunchy white Cheetos. Yeah. Um, if we're going any chip, I can't. That that Lay's ketchup is solid. Yeah, I like the Lay's um, ketchup. I think I'm gonna have to go Lay's ketchup. Okay, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah, but no, yeah. I definitely agree with the Lay's ketchup. It's a it's a it's a classic. It's a I think it's a Canadian classic. I, I talked to a lot of Americans and they're like, oh, ketchup chips? What are those? And I'm like, yeah, it might just be a Canadian thing. But uh, no, if you guys ever get the chance to try them, strongly recommend it. You mean just yeah, exactly. That? So I was I was like, yeah, I was gonna I was gonna mention to Sean. I was like, yeah, they have those like finger things to kind of pick stuff up. <laughs> do you want to do you want to show that? Oh yeah, um, show it again. Yeah, um, but yeah, they have those, they have those finger they have those finger things um, to yeah the tweezers. So you can't your your fingers are kind of free. Chopsticks, finger chopsticks. Okay, yeah, to to pick those up. So maybe maybe some skill required. To, to be able to use those, but I, I don't think the learning curve is, uh, is that steep there. But uh, yeah, some tools that might help you while you're gaming or trading and uh, uh, munching on those snacks at the same time. Yeah, Ramin says she, she's used those before, so um, nice nice look there. Apparently they, they, do, they do work, which is good to know. But yeah, also, there we go, we're closing that tab. Also, I do want to talk for a second here. Um, speaking of chopping, the spy is still giving me that 20 penny range I'm trying to play. Failed to play it long earlier, but now the short has gone well. We have two beak wetters. I have four to five planned beak wetters, which for me is uh, kind of ambitious. So I'm pretty happy. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, trying to trade new types of ways, but also still trying to trade in the way that is comfortable for me. I like scalping. This is a scalp. Pleased as dang punch in this one. Also, yeah, I think we're going to add to this position here as we come into back into the top of this range. So there we go. We have a couple more shares here. We're, we're getting, we're, 
we're, we're getting rolling here. I'm, I'm pleased as punch. Let's keep getting. I'm gonna, I'll take everything out, honestly, as we get back into 50s because this range getting a little bit tighter. And I want some of the smoke, but not, you know, not too much smoke. We want, we want a reasonable amount. So I, I'm happy with this trade. Disney also getting a little bit rangy here at the bottom. Looks a little bit bear flag-ish. And I say that because we did have that massive sell-off, of course, uh, when the market said bye, Bob, on news that Nelson, Peltz, and Trian were not going to be elected to the board. But we have this big move down. Now we're kind of chopping and shirting here on DIS. So a bit of a, a bear flag. But wow, the market's reaction to this Disney was a lot fiercer than I, I think I kind of expected, if I'm being really honest. But very happy I was in the short. So I got to, to be there when the market fell. Spy picking back up. So I might have to deal with that in a moment. Tesla... I got long here and now we're falling a little bit. I'm giving this to kind of the bottom of this earlier area. I wanna see what we do at 40s. If we do okay at 40s and we bounce, I might add. If we cannot do anything here, um, I'm gonna switch back to the five minutes so I have a clear sense of levels because that's what I'm trading off of for Tesla. But yes, yes, La. If we break below that uh, 16720 area, I'm out. So we're giving this roughly 40 pennies, trying to get about 40 pennies of reward. So risk reward, not bad here. Um, spy. Do your thing 21 within reason, but right now we're about six, seven pennies away from my point of entry. So nothing too bad here. Tesla also near my point of entry. Initially, I wanted to get out here at 168. I think that might have been a little too ambitious. So we're going to switch here. We're going to give this about 80, mid 80s to see how we do here. Pretty happy with this one. Also, um, any other stocks we want to look at? We did just get a super chat here from Papa Powell, Thailand, Britain, Switzerland, and Colombia, all working to make cannabis legal this year. So many catalysts for cannabis is actually crazy. Yeah, I know yeah. we looked at Cron earlier for a super chat. Let's look at ACB, which was really strong earlier as well, because ACB is a, definitely another cannabis name of note. We, ACB, this is a gore. I can't believe we're up almost 40% in ACB. Last time I looked at this up on the big desk, we are at 13%. This VWAP bounce, we got a couple times. Really nice look. We This also interesting area here, this 575 resistance, then becoming support. We bounce up here. We get a massive topping tail candle at 720. And then we fall here. Let's see what we do here at this 9 EMA. But this is a nice look. And I mean, I think if you look at the daily, let's look at MSOS actually for a better look if we're going to look at the daily and see how these catalysts, especially Germany legalization, talks of putting this uh, Florida Supreme Court allowing a referendum on um, cannabis into the, that ballot. So I think that'll be interesting too. Let's look at the daily here on MSOX. Yeah, this is a pretty pretty nice daily look here. Higher, or we're trying to make higher highs here, higher lows. And, and as Papa Powell in the chat, not, not the one who was speaking today in Stanford Business, but the one in the chat with the 499 Super Chat, thank you very much, much appreciated, um, is certainly correct about the amount of catalysts we have. And I think this MSOS, this cannabis ETF, really showing the bullishness in this name right now. So I think a very good look indeed. Uh, right, right now, yeah, I don't have, m my two trades were about break even. So a little bit down on this day, but I'm, I'm really proud of what I did with Disney. And I'm just trying to, to learn a little bit from every trade. Yeah. So uh, I got a, I got a little, a uh, little bit long on, on the Disney. I know I'm fighting a bit of the trend there, but uh, again, I like that. I like that hold uh, in and around that two sixties. Let's see if, uh, if that'll come into fruition. A bit of a, bit of a, 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 a trend to the downside here, but again, off of a, off of a strong reaction, right? So let's see if we can get a little bit of a, of a reversion there. That's what I'm potentially looking for. There goes a little bit of a pop on the markets. Hello. All right. So yeah, look at SMCI. Oh boy, it is accelerating to the upside right now. Uh, 1033s, 1035s is the high. So we did break out of yesterday's kind of uh, flush that happened in the pre-market, some of those prices. Uh, what is the weekly high here? You may ask. Uh, 10.6909. So can we do another uh, 30, what is it? 30, yeah, 36 points into the close? Maybe, I don't know. It's a thousand dollar ticker. It's already done quite a bit uh, to the upside off of some of these lows. So what is, what is 30 points to the upside if it is accelerating there and it has some tailwind from the market and Nvidia is pushing that 900 and S uh, SMH and SoxL and everybody is kind of pushing up towards their highs. But guess what? 
Intel's still holding near these lows. So maybe it has that selling pressure. Maybe that's that confirmation there of uh, Intel being distinctly different than the chips today and acting in its, uh, and acting in its own way there. So I uh, got a little long on Disney. Let's see if that one kind of works, uh, works out there. If not, more than willing to get out of that one. Um, let's, see, uh, let's see if that one comes into fruition. Uh, again, Disney shareholder. Was it a shareholder meeting? Or? Yeah, shareholder, yeah, shareholder meeting. Shareholder meeting. Yeah. So they actually had their annual shareholder meeting, and then you get a nice strong reaction off of it. Maybe potential continuation. Maybe I'm taking a, a cheeky long here, but I see I see a potential place to risk off of. And I want to try that idea, so I have put a little bit of risk on uh, for that one. That idea. Let's see if it comes into fruition. But Intel selling off quite nicely, even though the rest of these chips are catching quite a nice bid there. Uh, I like that. What's our friend Amazon up to? Hello, Amazon. She's definitely your friend. I know you and Amazon are you and Amazon. Yeah, we we got. I mean. We got a history. Let's say that. Oh yeah, uh, yeah we'll say that. <laughs> All right, so we're coming back into that 183, going into the cl going into almost power hour. So uh, we've got uh, two two hours and uh, seven minutes for that power uh, for that bell to, to to ring the closing bell and take a look at that. This is the weekly high on the Amazon. So let's take a quick look at the weekly. Take that VWAP off the chart and uh, see what Amazon's been up to. Oh boy, does this remind me of what Meta did just a couple months ago there, uh, that full-on V-shaped recovery back into those highs that we had in 21. And uh, take a look at Meta. Oh boy, look at that. Boom, bang. Look at that acceleration that happens off the top. Does that chart look similar? I think so. A little, little similar action going on here on that, on that push up. So let's take a quick look at some of these other names and see if they've, uh, they've kind of done that. Apple not really doing that. I know Nvidia had a piece of that as well. Nvidia kind of di already did that much earlier on in the year. Um, I'm trying to think. What are some other names that uh, may be lagging behind? Uh, we did talk about Meta there. Maybe a was AVGO one of them? Uh, AVGO not really okay, so that's uh, that's uh, that's fine. I'll I'll think of uh, I'll think of what it might have been a little bit later there. But uh, with Disney coming back into some of these lows, I am kind of watching to see if it holds up at this level or not. Again, aggressive move to the downside. Just looking for a quick little reversion if it'll have me. The mouse. I was told to never short the mouse. Someone but said, "Who said that?" I, I I heard I heard this in 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 the past when I uh, I forget who specifically. Feel like you've told me this before. Yeah, I, I've definitely mentioned I've definitely mentioned it. Some somebody was like, "Oh, you never you never short the mouse." Talking about not never shorting Disney, and I was like, "Okay, well, you know, I don't want to have a bias. Uh, I don't want to be long or short bias. Uh, I definitely just want to be opportunity biased. If the opportunity is there, long or short, doesn't matter. Uh, I I definitely want to flow uh, and be like water on." Uh, on said opportunities there, not really holding on to too much of a strong bias. But I do tend to like the shorts a little bit better than the longs just because of the nature of, uh, of sells on average relative to how uh, uh, we kind of normally bid up. But I like that. Let's kind of let's see if uh, we break some fresh lows here at the 60s on Intel pushing uh, into potentially fresh lows on the day here. Uh, let's see, that pop on the NQs and the ES getting a little bit of a top wick. How much time is left on this 15 minute candle to print? About four minutes here, Dara. So that also kind of uh, uh, is, uh, is clocking into our time here with only about four minutes left. Uh, yeah, let us know quickly in the chat what you what you guys might want us to look over uh, what you guys might have traded on the day in the midday session we had it we had we had a talk yesterday about trading in the midday session did you guys catch any of those moves we saw some volatility happening in the midday session right here at Disney prime example of stuff we talked about yesterday uh, in the in the in the midday session there so uh, let us know what opportunities you may or may not have had red or green more than welcome to kind of uh, talk about them and share yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, I think, honestly, that Disney, I think, was a, a good example of a midday opportunity. That was my best best trade of the day. Uh, pretty pretty happy with nice. that. Obviously, could have saved a piece with the dream and didn't. But there's so many mentions of Micron here. I do. It's, a, it's not been a micro amount of mentions of Micron. So I do want to talk about Micron. Um, shout out to everybody here. This is a really good example of that bull flag kind of move up consolidation. Another spike up here. We come and rest slightly higher low. Another slightly higher low. Another push. Really, this is, I mean, honestly, the hard thing with a stock, stock like this is there's not too much to analyze in the chart. Higher high, higher high, higher low, higher low. Really beautiful look here to the upside. 
So let's see um, how we're doing here on on Micron. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any news on this either. We've had a lot of positive catalysts and, or analyst moves on this one since the earnings. So certainly a nice look for sure on MU. Uh, let's look at, we haven't, it'd be nice if we made a new higher high though, because we haven't made another higher high from that high of day. We're about 15 pennies off a high of day. Let's see what Micron does. Uh, let's look at the daily chart here on MU. Yeah, blue sky set up. I, I don't know what to say. I have no words. Yeah, these are all time highs. Yeah, those, 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 those are all time highs. And I mean, even the lead up to all time highs was gorgeous. We had a nice little range, something that Sharif might call an Adara Panera trade. Uh, August 2023 to about October 2023. We hit the October lows. And does Micron ever have a November to remember? And the fun really never stopped. We had a bit of a lower low here uh, coming into February. And then we continued to fly to the high side. This is a, a really, really, really gorgeous look here. Also, Tesla breaking down just a skosh. We're about, we're within my area of interest. I'm not going to leave. But yeah, that trade was not super well conceived. And you know, I think it does say something that Disney, even though, of course, we did have that move happen a little bit faster because of the catalyst, that was, like I said, that was the name I, I did the best with. And that also was the name that was the rangiest. So I think that means something. I think I really need to kind of take, you know, heed that, take note of that and be like, you have to trade a way that works for you. So pretty happy with that Disney. Tesla, if you want to get moving in either direction so I know what to do, definitely let me know. Only two minutes left, Obi. What else are you looking at heading into the rest of the day? Uh, just these chips. These, uh, these chips are definitely very enticing here. Um, so uh, I'll be looking for, the, for those hot Cheetos, those ketchup, uh, ketchup uh, lays, uh, maybe some of those all dress, if they can give me some uh, confluence here. Uh, again, there, there it goes. Intel, some fresh lows. Well, is it fresh lows? Okay, we're, we're testing that 60, so we're almost there uh, into those fresh lows. We talk about that 57, 40, 57 being kind of that, uh, that low on the weekly, on the monthly as well. Uh, here, Disney holding up into the one, uh, that 120, uh, 127, he's 126, he's a little bit of some action there. So let's see whether or not that will work out. But other than that, I don't have too much on watch. I might look to get a little bit more aggressive on uh, on these uh, on the Intel short, maybe if it'll have me. But uh, again, uh, chips are very very strong. I see that SMCI is still still like rain like ripping, not ranging, ripping to the upside. Uh, still holding those uh, 1033s. But other than that, I don't have too much going on. Yeah, I mean we. This is a great show. Congrats on that Intel trade. Thank you guys so much for, for being here with us as we brought you Powell and Disney. But uh, without further ado, we'll see you tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Thanks again to Obi for killing it this week. But for Thanks now, for me. we have Brendan at the big desk. Yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah, uh, 2 o'clock on a busy afternoon here. Busy midday, uh, specifically with not one but two big events. Uh, Fed Chair Powell comes and goes. Sounds pretty hawkish uh, once again. Despite that, we're seeing... Uh, Decent-sized reversal this afternoon in the dollar.